Ela é um... This week on Weller Does Del Marva, we're joined by Jesse Vanderwen from Vanderwen Farm Creamery. Ryan McCracken talks end of the month deals at Pittsfield Ford. Stacy is here with some savvy social media secrets. And Chris from Weller's talks hot summer deals. Our friend Ken Simpler joins us to chat all things Delaware. Kevin Short swings by to talk tech. Let's not forget Dean and his delicious dishes. Now, your patriotic host, Tim Weller. Howdy, howdy, everybody. Hey, everybody. And uh, the voice that you heard on that uh, promo was our good friend Bob Backman, owner, operator of our local TV station, WRDE, My Cozy TV, and so on. So, good morning. You're watching and listening to my weekly show, Weller Does Del Marva. This will be a show and a morning like no other. We actually make this show from scratch every week. So, as you watch it and hear it, you think, oh, these guys are paid professionals and they're so polished. Uh, just watch it long enough and your opinion will change. You'll say, who are these guys and how in the world do they end up on TV? So, anyway, good morning to you. We're here. We're inside Smith's Cafe in C4, Delaware. We've got an action-packed show. Uh, one of the first people I'm going to talk to or talk about is Walls Service Center. That's Colin Walls. He's very busy here. He has a business called Catch It Live that uh, actually produces the show, the audio, the visual, and everything in between. And at the very beginning, he's always really busy. So good morning to you. Good morning to everybody. I hope you're going to enjoy the show. We've got a lot of different guests today. But um, like I say, I want to tell you about Walls Service Center. And what's going on in Milford, hey, Delaware? Well, we're going to be open today, Jim. And, open uh, today. Yep, we're going to be busy. I know Is your we mic on for schedule. sure? It's on, I think. Just Sounds checking. like it. No? Okay. Really? I just, I like correcting Colin whenever hey, I get hey, the hey. chance. It's on. Saying, Is your mic on? And it's on. Saying, yeah. I can hear it. Okay. If you can hear it, we're I good. I can hear it. I can hear okay. myself talking. All right. In his mind's <laughs> eye. In his mind's eye. That's right. So, Wall right. Service Center is... Open today? We are open today, and okay. we're busy. Uh, we got lots okay. of air conditioning work. We're, lots we're of air doing. conditioning. Yep, and we've uh, we've talked a lot about air conditioning compressors. Yes. You know what the warranty is? We all well. Them, that's right? where I always get amazed. I buy a thirty, forty thousand dollar vehicle. I don't get a lifetime warranty on anything. Generally, what you're going to get brand new is a three year, thirty six thousand mile warranty. Go to Wall Service Center, get a new air conditioner, right. compressor, or whatever it's called. Maybe we should just put them on. Why don't you, you just put the them car. on the manufacturer's new vehicles <laughs> there you go. with the lifetime warranty? I'll take that deal. You'll take I'll that take deal. That you would deal. be busy. Yeah. So yeah, it's been be hot. Busy. It's yeah. muggy. People with breathing problems and so on. Right. And actually, it's now a new American right. You have the right to good air conditioning in your vehicle. Well, I can tell you this. Once you get used to it. You won't want to give it up. You don't want to give it up. And I you'll tell I when it's not up working with air just in right. The house. Right. What was that? I didn't grow up with air conditioning in my house. Oh, for real? For real. And okay. And i got to have it now. But you grew up in Ellendale. That's right. And uh, wasn't it quite a while there. before the town of Ellendale actually allowed air conditioning? <laughs> yeah, right. So that yeah. might have been it. Yeah, it's in the new town charter. <laughs> it's in the new town so, charter. Anyway, Wall Service Center, we can do all kinds of air conditioning work on your car. Actually, everything on your car. We've got a couple of... Simple diagnosis. Uh, Simple diagnosis. We've got a couple of evaporator cores scheduled for this coming week. Where you take uh, the dash out? Pull the whole dash out. Yep. Wow. Yep, we've got a couple of those scheduled, and, uh, you know, we've got other minor things as well. So it's not always a major problem Correct. with your air conditioner. It could be something as simple as a blown fuse or a bad relay. We see bad relays on cars lots of times. Mm -hmm. Toyotas, Hondas are the, the biggest ones for that. But really? But that's one of the things that we can offer you is our expertise where we do Seen so much that work. Seen that before. Exactly. We can right. go right to the problem. Not and our first day on the job. Back on the road 
sooner. That's right. So Wall Service Center, give us a call, 422-8110, wallservicecenter.com on the web. You can go there. You can actually schedule an appointment there. You should okay. try that sometime, Jim. You need to you do that hashtag. Hashtag, not our first day. Not our first day. <laughs> Something yeah. like that, you right. know? Not our right. first day on the right. job. We just got started 60 years ago. Right, just 60 years exactly. ago when we started. So um, Right, so Wall Service Center, we've been around a long time. We've been in the Milford community the entire time. Yeah. Been right there. We Milford moved two, and we moved Wall two Service Center have grown together. Yeah, we moved two blocks in 60 years. I wonder if 60 years ago was it two counties? I think it was. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure it was. I'm just checking. Yeah. I didn't know if you guys were part of putting that line down the center of the Mississippian River. Right, yeah, we did that. Yeah. Wall Service Center. <laughs> grandfather's out there and waiters. And 220 Northeast Front Street, downtown Milford. Just stop in and say hi. I saw you on TV, heard you on the radio. Okay. All right, thanks. All right, and while you're at it, you can go ahead and do some business, too. In other words, so uh, now they open at eight today. So keep that in mind. Wall Service Center, downtown Milford. I don't know if we're on the radio yet or not. But anyway, we're here. We're inside Smith's Cafe. There's a lot going on. It's a busy morning and we are on the radio. So good morning to my radio audience. You're listening to Jim Weller. Weller does Delmarva. We have got a action packed show and uh, we're in Smith's Cafe. And if you want to join us this morning, get up and get down here. OK, all roads lead to Smith's Cafe sooner or later. If you turn right or turn left long enough. OK, it's in Seaford, right where the Food Lion Shopping Center used to be. Home cooked family restaurant, Smith's Cafe. It's a great place to eat. So you're listening to and watching Weller Does Del Marva. I want to first talk about swimming pools. Now, Column Walls Wall Service Center was talking about air conditioners, but air conditioners and swimming pools both go with summer. And it's hot, it's muggy, it's sticky, and you get off work and you want to go home and you want to dip in the pool. You want to just relax, let your hair down, and get in the cool, cool pool and cool your temperature and just relax. So I just want to let you know, our friends at Pools and Spas Unlimited in Milford will hook you up with a pool. Whether you want a concrete pool, a vinyl pool, or a fiberglass pool, a big one, a little one. Maybe your homeowners association wants to buy one for the whole development. They can help you out. Or maybe you just want to buy one to have all your friends and neighbors over or whatever your reason. If you need a pool, you need to talk to Pools and Spas Unlimited. If you have a pool and you have problems or want it serviced or need chemicals or supplies, Pools and Spas Unlimited can help you there. Whether they sold you the pool or not, if you need help, they can help, okay? Now, also, if you want a sauna, like a hot tub, in other words, I call it a hot tub. I think some people call it a sauna. If you want one of them, they got them too. So anyway, it's Pools and Spas Unlimited. They're on 219 North Rehoboth Boulevard in Milford. Good place to deal, lots of selection, friendly, knowledgeable sales staff, and they will help you out. Been around a long time? Look them up online at swimdelmarva.com. Their phone number is 424-1999. 302-424-1999. Also, it is Pools and Spas Unlimited of Milford. And that's Milford, Delaware, not Milford, Connecticut. So anyway, you check them out and uh, tell them I sent you if you would. 424-1999. Now, my first guest was on, I think, last week and maybe a week before. Anyway, it's a young man I uh, have known for a while now, and uh, he is one of the Vanderwin family, and his name is Jesse Vanderwin, um, farmer, ice cream maker, husband, and hoping to be our local state representative. That's right. That's right, right. Jim. So, um, and you're uh, out beating the bushes, more or less. Out, out beating the bushes, trying to drum up support. Okay. Um, and it's the campaign trail. It's, it's going great. I think people are really thirsty for someone young. Okay. And someone that's got a business background and a strong family background to help lead our state. And a lot of roots in the community. A lot of roots in the community. We've been involved from the fair board to the local Kiwanis Club, okay. Farm Bureau Board, Soil Conservation District. My family's been involved in a lot of stuff for a lot of years. Are you tax ditch familiar? I'm very tax ditch familiar. Oh, my gosh. I'm the secretary, treasurer, president, manager of a tax ditch. <laughs> I'm, I'm on what a thankless job. <laughs> My family's on about six tax ditches. Are they so really? We get that. Okay. So, but you got to have them. You know, That's if you right. want to grow mosquitoes, you got to have a tax ditch. That's right. right. Dra drainage is key. <laughs> drainage, drainage is key. key. Keep it flowing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Keep it flowing is the key thing. All right. So anyway, why in the world a man as busy as you are? I want to talk ice cream for just a minute, though. Okay. How is the ice cream business year round? 
Do people buy ice cream in the winter? Yes, they do, and, and that's, uh, that was a surprise to us. We didn't think it would be a real strong year-round business, but with our wholesale and even our home location on 404, the ice cream business in the winter is, is strong enough we're open really? all year long. And does ice cream taste better or worse in the winter? It tastes better to me because I have more time to eat it. Oh, okay. You but, can uh, eat it more relaxed. But, I, but if you ask me, it's, it's good at Vanderwind's all year long. All the time. That's right. Okay. And you make the ice cream. My wife would get upset if I took the credit for that. Her oh. and my sister-in-law and a couple others make all the ice cream. But, yes, uh, okay. we do make it on you both You stay products. out of the way. I stay out of the way. Okay. Well, that's wisdom. That's right. When you know it's time to stay out of the way, that's just a good thing. That's good management. That's good management, right. All right. So, anyway, you woke up one day and decided to enter the political arena, or you've been dreaming about this forever, or well, what from happened? A, from a young age, politics have always interested me. I, I feel like if you want to make a difference, you need to be involved. Did you ever have any family members in the political world? No. Uh, would you my, be the first Vanderwin? I would be the first Vanderwin ever elected. Okay. Um, I, um, my family's always known the local legislators. And been supportive. And been supportive. Right. Because right. of our involvement in the community. Right. In other words, when you own a business and I don't know if you have hundreds of acres of land or thousands of acres of land, but you have a lot of land. That's right. You pay a lot of taxes. We pay a lot of taxes know, and we create and, a lot of jobs. And that's right. one reason I wanted to get in. I mean, I think we have got a problem in this state for letting small businesses grow. You know, fault small businesses you mean can't. We're being throttled. We're being throttled back. It's too, it's, it's too costly. I mean, if you have to get a, a stormwater management plan, if you want to disturb more than five or six acres, the engineering cost is is outrageous. And I and I think, you know, there's a lot of red tape, tape and regulations. And the people in these agencies aren't bad people. No. It's just the process. They're has just gotten, doing their job. That's right. The process has gotten so cumbersome. Right. And a lot of that's not come from the legislator. A lot of it's come from the bureaucracy. Of it all. Uh, of it all. But that's where we're at. And, um, you know, we really need to let this, this small business environment grow because that's where most of the jobs are created. And quite frankly, we've not created a lot of public sector jobs the last few years. The most job creation has been at the government level, and I think that's a problem. Right, because small businesses will work the extra mile to keep employees, to make sure their business survives. They won't just, to them, it's, it's personal if they were to have to close or give up or something like that. So small business people are the core of, of what keeps America going, in my opinion, for sure, well, I agree. versus, versus I, big corporations. I agree, Jim. I mean, a small business is going to stay loyal to their community, where these big companies, if something doesn't go their way in a certain region, they can or pick up gonna, and leave. Or they're going to make a lot of cuts or something like that. I mean, we've lost DuPont, basically. We've lost AstraZeneca. We don't make cars anymore. Like I said, right. we don't make nylon. I mean, we have got to make sure we're creating jobs. Agriculture and tourism, that's really all we have left. Otherwise, our children are going to leave this area. That's right. They're going to go to school, they're going to go to college somewhere, and they're going to say, Mom, Dad, I can't find a good job here. That's right. You know, so we need more of that. So you decided to run for state representative. I think Dave Wilson is going to move over and run for Senate. Yes, and Dave has and endorsed me. Dave has endorsed you, and Dave's a longtime, you know, um, state representative. And uh, so he's basically saying, look, he's aligning his name with you, saying, I know this man, I know his family. I think people should consider getting to know you and then make their own decision from there. Because that's, that's what we're trying to do is just educate people. That's right. Just saying. Now, do you have, did I see on Facebook where you're having an event where people can meet you at your place in Greenwood, or did I get that wrong? No, you're exactly right, Jim. This coming Thursday, June This 20, Thursday. This Thursday coming, June 28th at 6.30, we're having an ice cream social. A.M. or P.M.? P.M. When I talk to farmers, I have to make sure... Are we talking a.m. or p.m.? <laughs> well, so you're talking p.m. It's 6.30 p.m., and we're going to have it at our Greenwood location. And okay. it's just for people to come out. Just a meet and greet. A meet and greet to get to know me and get okay. to know what I'm standing for and why I'm running for office. So they can and, grill you. That's they right. They can ask you questions and Well, stuff that's like part that. of the job. I need to know the tough questions. Right. I mean, I'm not doing this for myself. I'm doing it for the community. Because mm -hmm. you've already got plenty to do. I've already got plenty to do. Right. You're not sitting around bored to death. That's right. That's right. All right. So basically, this Thursday, now this Vanderwind's ice cream in Greenwood is you just go through Greenwood or go into Greenwood. If you're going into Greenwood, it's on your right, right there. It's a green building, right? That's correct. It's got stones in the driveway. Stones in the driveway. Okay. Got a little tent out there with some chairs under it or tables or something. That's right. That's okay. right. We'll, we'll be very accommodating to whoever wants to come out. Okay. And then if you're coming through Greenwood, just right on the other side of Greenwood, 
It's right there on your left. That's that's exactly right. right. Speaking of ice cream, what are the hours of the Greenwood one? When does it close is my biggest question. Nine o'clock. All the locations okay. except Dewey is, is 10. 10 o'clock. Um, but the other locations are nine. Do people eat ice cream at nine or 10 o'clock at night? Absolutely. Not just pregnant and, and, women? And to be I mean, honest in other with words, you, down to Dewey, sometimes we don't get the doors closed until 11 because people really? just keep coming. All right. But when women are pregnant, don't they crave ice cream? They crave. They buy it by the two-and-a-half-gallon container. Really? Okay. <laughs> All right. And so can you buy ice cream and take it home like that? Oh, you, sure. We'll sell pints, quarts, tubs. Oh, it's all ready to go? or It, it can be ready to go. and Well, a lot of it's pre-packed. Yes, ready to go. But okay. if, if there's a special order, we'll accommodate. Really? That's right. And then you have them ice cream trucks where if somebody's having an event, they can hire the truck to come out. That's right. And we've just purchased another one, so um, we can accommodate more venues now. Okay. And you, are you on the fair board or just somebody in your family's on the fair board? My grandfather and I are both on the fair board, and so really? is one of my aunts. That's a pretty uh, taxing job it's it's a tough 10 there's days. a lot to keep up with up there there's a lot to keep up with it's an 80 member board and and it okay. was an honor to be selected okay all right and um does vanderwind sell ice cream at the fair yes we do really yes we okay. do that big purple truck that big purple truck all right okay um what else do we need anybody to know just so you know your 10 your five minutes is gone already so but that's okay that's all right. I just I, want you to know how, how quick it goes. It does. It goes One quick. of the two of us is talking. <laughs> so anyway, people can know you, get to know you this Thursday. They can come out and just say, man, I don't know who you are. I don't even know if I should or shouldn't vote for you. Well, that's what I want. You Tell know, me why. I you know. can't serve the 35th district unless I know all the folks and know Either. their concerns. Okay. So you want people genuinely to come out and say hi and shake your hand and chit-chat with you and, and just test drive just say that's right it's a guy that i want representing me and i want to know what's on people's mind because i'm not just representing myself or my family i'm representing everybody in the 35th district well i can tell you i myself as a small businessman i can totally agree when you want to go to do anything anything it is so cumbersome you know and there's just so many little things that you almost can't navigate it on your own so you have to hire engineering firms and all these things and they do a great job but it just it slows the process down. I could have an idea, but it doesn't mean I'm going to stay interested for two years to go through the process. Well, like you said, this uh, this economic engine's got a governor on it. We're only firing on so many cylinders, and I think right. we need to amp that up a little bit because this state's got a lot of potential. Where we're located in the United States, you know, we're close to ports, we're mm -hmm. close to the major cities. Um, no we've sales got a lot tax. of no sales tax. We've got a lot of potential here. We just need to make sure we're giving people an opportunity. To exercise their right to grow. That's right. Right. All right. Anything else? Oh, did your wife want to come over? No? I was just checking. <laughs> I think she's just eating. Just eating. She, okay. All right. Is she an early bird? You got, is this early for her? Or you're like, no, it, she's up. It's a little answer. early, but when okay. I, I got up this morning and checked some irrigations and, and looked at the chickens, and when I came home, she said, I think I'm kind of hungry this morning. I'll go with you. Okay. <laughs> so, so your morning consists of what now? You went and checked the irrigation. Well, when I get up and... I get up pretty early in the morning, especially this time of year, and I'll I'll check things around the farm. Okay. We'll kind of have a family meeting to know what we're all doing. Okay. Uh, and then we all go get from there. And okay. And you know, when you're run, run, running a small business, as you well know, your plans change after you make plans. Yes, they do. But that's part of that's part of. And it. everything you had planned still needs to be done. That's right. Wow. And you know, we always figure out how to get it done. Right. Accomplishers. That's right. You know, so your family is, um, you're all connected, very involved. We're very involved in the community, very involved in our business, and we wouldn't have it any other way. All right. Well, anything else you want to say? How does people learn about you? Where are you at on Facebook? What's it called? Friends for Jesse Vanderwin. Friends for Jesse Vanderwin. And they can go to uh, like jesse35.com. Jesse35.com, okay. Or they can text or call me on my cell phone, 302 245 Zero zero thirty five. You're going to get to where you don't want to give that out. Two four five zero zero thirty five. All right. So, folks, if you're watching on Facebook, all that stuff's in the comments and um, you can get it there. So anything else? I don't think so, Jim. I appreciate you having me on. And all right. Um, I'd love to hear from people. OK, so check him out. Test drive this guy, you know, get up with him and ask him questions and see if he's for real. See if he looks like a hard worker. Look at his hands and see if they have any calluses on them and so on. They're a little rough. So, all right. Anything else? I don't think so, Jim. I all appreciate right. it. All right. We're going to leave you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right. Have a good day. You can hang around if you want. So.
whatever. Well, there he is, Jesse Vanderwin. If you have never met him, your chance is this Thursday night. Also, I want to tell you a couple things. This morning's menu is pretty full. We had Jesse Vanderwin, who has just been on. We have Ryan McCracken coming up after, I think, 7.30-ish for uh, talking about Pittsville Ford. Ford, Ford, and more Ford. What? What thing? Oh, yeah. Why don't I do that? Here you go. This is a professionally made collage telling you what's going on. Here we go. This week on Weller Does Del Marva, we're joined by Jesse Vanderwen from Vanderwen Farm Creamery. Brian McCracken talks end of the month deals at Pittsville Ford. Stacey is here with some savvy social media secrets. And Chris from Weller's talks hot summer deals. Our friend Ken Simpler joins us to chat all things Delaware. Kevin Short swings by to talk tech. And let's not forget Dean and his delicious dishes. Now, your patriotic host, Tim Weller. Okay, so there's the lineup. We got an action-packed show. Just keep it moving is what they're telling me. So anyway, we're inside Smith's Cafe, and you're invited. Everybody is invited to come down and see for Delaware and uh, just hang out. We're going to have a busy environment here this morning. Kids eat free on Saturday up till noon. So anyway, I see Jack Riddle has stopped by. Um, he always enjoys uh, pancakes and French toast, um, but not both at the same time. Okay? So anyway, and Scrapple. All right. So anyway, I um, want to talk about George Luff real quick. But anyway... Um, I'm going to talk to Jack if he can read my hand signals. One was this, one was this. But anyway. Oh, it's okay. But let me do this commercial for George Luff because I think you know George. But anyway, George Luff is my accountant and has been for years. And I just want to tell people if you need an accountant for your business or if you uh, have an estate you want to settle or if you uh, won the lottery and want to know how to do what what's right with your money or if you're just a person. So personal, business, you know, um, whatever. George Luff is a good accountant, and I've dealt with him for years. Rehoboth, Milford, Dover, three locations. And uh, he also helps us with our payroll, and that's something that's kind of been new over the past few years. It's called Easy Payroll, and there's really nothing easy, but he can make it easier. So whether you deal with him or don't deal with him for your accounting work, it doesn't matter. He can still help you with your um, payroll. So it's called Easy Payroll at Luff & Associates, Milford, Rehoboth and Dover. I'm going to give you one phone number that will get you anywhere you need to go, and it's 422-9699, 302-422-9699, and on the web, it's LuffCPAs.com. So uh, how do you know George Luff there, Jack? I've known George probably 25 years. And, Have you really? Uh, yeah, I've known George and, and Kathy and his firm for a long time, and uh, we do we do some, you know, we work with George, and okay. uh, I, I think what I, what I like about George First of all, he's a pretty smart guy. He is I mean, that. He stays up on that all, all the rules. Well, he has us as regs. friends. Well, so that that, I'm speak sure that brings it down a little bit. For how smart he is. Yeah, <laughs> that brings it down a little bit. But uh, he stays uh, up on all the stuff that's going on, and uh, he he's he's pretty passionate about making sure his clients get taken good care of. Yes, I mean, he does. I, and I know you you've had a good experience with him. I've been and, with him 25 have, years or so. I have a bunch of friends and a bunch of folks that uh, deal with George, and you know it's just uh, you know you can get him on the phone. Yeah, you, you, you can, can get, get a hold of him. Get, get he's him real on. people. And uh, his son, Tyler, you can also get a hold of him, too. Yeah. So you seen their like office that. in Rehoboth? Um, I've only seen one room. Right on, the, right on the avenue. Oh, isn't it beautiful? Oh, it's a nice office, yeah. Yep, very conveniently located. Yep. So what are you doing today? You here to have breakfast? I'm here to have breakfast. Susan's coming out later, and we're okay. babysitting. Is the granddaughter week. coming? We're not sure yet. That's okay, she can make up, her debut. Still, I uh, believe me, you made that offer before she was born. So right. What's I, her name? Anna Lee. Anna Lee. So we, we're not sure yet. We're not. All sure right. About well, that. it'll be a surprise, everybody. Uh, it will definitely be a surprise. But yep, we're gonna come out and have breakfast, and uh, you're gonna hang around all morning. I'm gonna hang around all morning, and then so I if you wanted to uh, meet uh, Jack Riddle, you oh, could today. Well, that would be a highlight of nobody's day. Well, you never know. You never know. He'll sign, sign, autographs sign autographs on the bottom of a blank check right uh, down there. Yeah, you've tried that right. a few times. Yeah. I, I, you, 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 you've slept me. You and Colin, i I got uh -huh. to keep my eyes on you guys. Well, but somebody no. needs to keep you busy. Uh, you can't golf yeah, every day. Uh, no, I don't golf much. No, I may keep you, you busy, can, so no, I'm saying. Keep me golf. But, uh, no, I and mean, Ken Simpler's coming, isn't he? Ken Simpler's coming. I state that, treasurer. I heard our state treasurer's coming, and he's working pretty hard on a bill that I'm sure he's going to want to talk to you he about. He is. 
he's so going to share it with he's, us. Uh, and he's done a good job. I mean, and he'll tell you all about it, but this, this bill to try to help uh, smooth out our, our state government's uh, fiscal you know, ins and outs. Mm -hmm. um, he's got support from the governor. He's got support from both Republicans and Democrats. It's it's uh, it's gathering steam. He's just trying to wow. get it over the finish line. So I'm sure he's going to give you all the details. So I don't muck it up. Right. But um, he'll be here. I'm sure to tell you about that. And uh, and I think he's going to hang around for a while too, just so he can. He's going to be here till 10 o'clock, yeah, I believe. He's going to hang out so here. So somebody wants to meet our state treasurer. They could yeah. get up and get rolling and get on down here and or over here. And can they have breakfast when they come here, too? I they guess can they have can. breakfast, That's yeah. That's what I'm having some of that scrapple later. You Are you really? Yeah. Okay. You know, a lot of folks, uh, I have, a, I have a, a friend who is um, um, in Rotary. Of course, you know I'm involved in the Rotary. You're very. His name's Evan Burrell, and he's, uh, he's from Australia. And I've tried to convince him to come to Smith's and have scrapple. There, there's like 30,000 Rotarians in Toronto right now. Really? And I keep sending him emails, and I'm going to take a picture of my scrapple when I get it for breakfast and send it up to Evan just okay. so he can kind of be at Smith's without being right. at Smith's. without being at Smith's. So, well, that could be a Christmas gift you send him. Yeah, well, I don't know what it costs to send Australia, send scrapple to Australia. Then. Right, could, because there's be a this dollar exchange and Yeah, we'll have to everything. work that out. You'll figure it out, then. Uh, I'll, I'll, Very well, smart. If I cut off somebody at the bank, figure it out. Right. Somebody at the bank. That's a good smarter leader. Smarter than me. Surround yourself with people better than yourself. That's the sign of a good leader. Mm, All right. No. Anything else? No. No. I'm. I got to get a cup of coffee though. Okay. The they booze are filling up. You ever had? You're not a coffee drinker. Not unless I'm but staying up really real late. Coffee. And that young lady there has waited on us the last couple of times, and she is fabulous. She's fabulous. So, well, good. Service, I only good drink coffee. coffee late at night if I'm out late, and if I think I'm going to have to testify you out late in court. Last night? Did so. I see you out late last night? Yeah, I went to a, uh, what's it called, a Jeff, concert. Do you, even know, do you even know? I've never been. I mean, How did Kevin Short talk you into that? I talked him into it. You, I said, I decided you about even know who six Jefferson or seven Starship last is? night. Do you even know who that is? No, but I want to know. I tell you, the gentleman that was doing a lot of the singing, he's getting ready to turn 80, and he had some spunk. It made me think, I don't feel old at 60 any longer. In other words, I saw that picture on Facebook and I said, "Get out of here! <laughs> He's not a Jefferson star." I was there. Are you going to be? I don't like to do to not run up Next on stage. Next thing we know, we'll see you at the rudder and the core. Yes, you never and know. Or the, the Freeman uh, stage. Freeman and stage hanging the Hudson out. Fields. You should go to the Hudson Field stuff. That's going to be. I probably it's gonna will. Be a, it's going to be a big summer over there. Really? It's going to be a big summer. All yeah. right. Well, I'm thinking about getting out more often. Okay. So, that's a warning. That's a warning. That's a warning. warning. I may warning. show up at um, concerts. Well, as long as so. you got your wingman column with you, you'll be all right. Mm -hmm. so. I want to keep you under control. But, yeah, but, you know, me and Kevin had a good time. I, and Denise I was is like, shocked. I didn't, I thought what they, did you bring me for if you're going to hang out with Kevin? Yeah. So I had Kevin to back that is down. Is he coming this morning? He'll be here this morning. Good, good. Yep, he's very right, busy, young man. All right, I'm going to get some coffee. All right, thanks all right, a lot, Jack. All right, see ya. There he goes, Jack Riddle, everybody. Hey, let's talk about dry zone real quick. Everybody hears me talk about dry zone. They're like, Jim Weller, how in the world can dry zone do all these different things and do them well? It's because they know what they know how to do, and they do what they know how to do. And if you have a crawl space, and it's damp or moist, it's not helping your insulation, it's not helping your health, it gets, you know, you're breathing it because all your duct work for your heating and air conditioning system is there, and so on. So if you have a crawl space that has moisture in it, it should not, okay? That's not normal. If you have a basement that leaks, if you um, need any electrical work, there's so many services they offer, but what they offer, they offer it well, they know what they're doing, and uh, they do it well. So it's called Dry Zone. If you say, well, I don't know if I do need them, don't need them, look up their website. It's dryzone.com, dryzone.com. I'm just telling you this. I have dealt with them on numerous occasions with numerous things, and they know what they're doing. They stand behind what they do. They have a long warranty, and they're backed by a nationwide organization. So people say, well, what happens if Dry Zone wasn't there? Doesn't matter. That warranty continues on with the nationwide group. And if you sell your home, your warranty is transferable. So there's everybody and their brother doing crawl space encapsulation. It's like a plague right now. Everybody's into it. But you need to really test the waters. You need to ask questions. You need to look at their places. You know, Dry Zone has a big barn on Route 16, and they welcome people to stop in and say hi. So it's 684 is the phone number, 684 5034 684 5034 dryzone.com on the web stop by on route 16 in ellendale and say hello they're open monday through friday and you can look around and see what's going on at dry zone and meet the folks behind the scenes all right we're taking a break from the radio we're going to truck right on on my facebook page and my cozy tv so stay with us everybody here we go 
All right, so we're still with you. We never went anywhere, okay? We're right here inside Smith's Cafe, and this is Weller Does Delmarva, and we are already behind schedule, but we're having a good time getting there. So anyway, I just want to let you know, if you want to come down and join us, there's uh, some booths. It's a big restaurant. Everybody's ready. Food is great. And now we're going to talk about Walls Service Center, Colin Walls, yes. owner-operator, El Presidente. Mm. Of Wall Service Center, which is going to open today at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock, we will be open today, Jim. That's right. So okay. if you need an appointment, give us a call. And you're and positive that mic's working. That mic is working. Because I don't hear you. You okay. don't hear it in your in your, no. in your monitor? All right, I can I'm work good, on though. that. I'm good, though. I can see your lips moving. I just want to make really? sure it's really working. Right. Okay. Hey, 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 hey. So nope, I'm not I don't sure. hear you. Still don't? Nope. That's weird. As long as it's going out over the air, I'm happy. It is going out over the okay. air for sure. For sure. All right. Hang on. Whether can I can hear you or not, I've got it all memorized. Whatever you're going to say, I've heard it before. <laughs> okay. You just want to do the commercial for me? No, I like you doing it. Oh, but okay. anyway, all I'm right. just saying, Walls Service Center has been around a long time. Colin right. Walls' grandfather started it. Then his dad had it. Now Colin's got it. Colin's got four sons. And uh, already Colin the second is involved in it. And um, they do everything. But I think the big thing is get your oil changed. In case you're going to take a summer vacation or right. if you got one planned, mm -hmm. by getting an oil change, you do that health checkup where you check everything from the depth of the tread of the tires to the brakes to everything in between for free. You just get your oil change, get your vehicle checked over. And we do several of them a week where, where people are going to go out on a trip. Right. And they, they've heard me talk about it and they say, I just want a good check over. Why not? And sometimes we find things, sometimes we don't. Because not all places that change oil do it as thoroughly or offer the service that you do. Not that they're doing anything wrong. It's just an added value bonus. Well, you've of seen Wall the checklist Service that we have, and that yes. checklist keeps us consistently doing the same thing. So, you know, there's processes that we have, and that's one of them right. to keep us consistently doing things the same way and make sure we're checking the same things. But over then and over you get again. this. I know it doesn't seem like a big deal to everybody, right. but it's this roadside assistance. I love it. I've never used it once in my life. But what I like about it is I've got a toll free number that if I get a flat tire or run out of gas, or, you know, need a jump start or anything. I got a free roadside assistance just by getting an oil change. That's your favorite service you've never used. Yeah, it? that is. Yeah, it's like having a spare tire or a snowblower. You it's never just comforting have to use having right. one. And, you know, if you never use it, it's okay. If I never use this roadside assistance, it's okay. Right. But just having it, it's like having all them extra numbers on your speedometer. It's just nice knowing they're there. <laughs> you know, so anyway, I'm just, ever need them. <laughs> just in case, just in case right. I ever need them. So right. I like this roadside <laughs> assistance and it's free with anything from an oil change or greater. Well, even if you have an AC problem, air conditioning okay. is not working. It's going to come with that, too. Really? Yeah. So, again, it's summertime. Kids are getting out of school, out of college, whatever. People are planning trips. Get an oil change, which gives you not just an oil change, but it checks over the health of your vehicle and you get the free roadside assistance with it. Yep. Okay, 422-8110. Nobody's right. there to answer the phone until 8 o'clock. Not until 8 o'clock, but, but uh, at eight call then. Call then and say, good morning, Tracy. How's your day going? Okay? Wallservicecenter.com on the web. On the web? 220 Northeast Front Street, downtown Milford. Stop in and say hi. All right. Okay? Okay. Now, people are coming. People are going. So, Smith's Cafe is here. You're invited, okay? Everybody is allowed to eat at Smith's Cafe. It doesn't matter if you're, like, really tall or if you're vertically challenged. You've got a full head of hair or a little bit of hair. Whether you like a lot of food or a little food, Smith's Cafe has got it all. And kids eat free on Saturday up till noon, okay? And if you like their Facebook page, which is Smith's Cafe, they've got all kinds of daily breakfast, lunch, and dinner specials. So uh, we're here we're going to be going back on the radio in just a minute. So if you're watching on TV and you say, man, I got to get to work. I was supposed to be there at 7 o'clock. But a good excuse is I was watching Jim Weller on TV. But you can only be so late with that excuse. That will only get you so far. Okay? But when you walk in and your boss is watching the show, it's okay, too. So anyway, I'm just letting you know that we're here. It's a weekly show. You say, well, how many weeks? This is week number 250. 250 times we've done this show. That's a lot of times, to believe it or not. How many years is that? That's over four years. Four years would be 208. So it's over four years, but not quite five. And when you look at me, you say, man, you just must have been a kid when you started. 
I was a kid when I started in business. So anyway, so good morning, good morning, good morning. Weller's Utility Trailers will be open at 9 o'clock. We've actually got Chris from Weller's going to be on with me in a little bit here this morning. And uh, Ryan McCracken is here. He's waiting patiently for his time to talk. So I want you to think of somebody you can call and ask them to tune in for Ryan. Because Ryan McCracken is at Pittsville Ford in Pittsville. Isn't it convenient how Pittsville built the town around Pittsville Ford? I mean, I think that's pretty cool. But anyway, are we on the radio? We are not on the radio. So we're going to wait for the radio audience. But I just want to tell you, if you know somebody that might want to buy a vehicle, call them up now. Because for all I know, Ryan's going to give away two or three vehicles for free. I have no idea what he's going to talk about. He might say, Jim, you should have never even said that. Don't be getting people thinking that. But you never know. I mean, he could he could just flip right out on the show and just start giving them away, one one right after another. Who knows what he's going to do? So anyway, put your hands in your pockets. Oh, there you go. He's going to give those keys away. So And then report the car stolen. No, he wouldn't do that. All right, so anyway, I just want to say good morning. Who's back at the studio? Is it Fran? Oh, Fran can't hear me. You're darn tootin' he can't hear me. Now I can talk about Fran. All right, now anyway, so we're prepping for the radio, and then I'm going to talk about my eye doctor, okay? My eye doctor. Good morning, everybody. Jim Weller here. If you're just tuning in, thanks a lot. And we're going to do our best to make this show worth listening to. So it's Jim Weller, Weller Does Delmarva. I want to talk real quick about Delaware Eye Clinics, okay? And people say, well, Jim, who in the world is your eye doctor? My eye doctor is Dr. Smith. I like him. He's a good guy. He's not a whole lot taller than me, so I'm not intimidated when I deal with him. I like that. But anyway, he really knows his stuff. And I got to know him a while back, and he's really good. So if you need to have your eyes checked, maybe, you know, you're... you're working and you just can't read like you used to be able to or that 55 mile an hour speed limit you keep thinking it's 65 miles an hour and you need to get your eyes checked i'm telling you a great place is delaware eye clinics okay they're in milton and it's a uh, locally owned business and uh, they're not some big conglomerate or whatever you know they are a locally owned business delaware eye clinics and they are in milton and if you need to get your eyes checked whether it's you your kids or your grandkids or, you know, if your neighbor's eyes need checking, volunteer to take your neighbor to the eye doctor. But the phone number is 684-2020. I think that's kind of a cool number, too. 2020. So, anyway, 684-2020 if you want to get an eye exam or if you need some new glasses. They actually have, like, single, single vision frames and lenses and lenses. Frames and lenses starting as low as 99 bucks. But they offer designer eyewear. They have prescription and non-prescription sunglasses. They have whatever you need. So give them a call, 684-2020. Check them out. It's called Delaware Eye Clinics. And when you call, there's plenty of eye doctors there. I just happen to like Dr. Smith. So my eye doctor is Dr. Smith. Check him out, 684-2020. Now, let's talk automobiles. New, used, pre-owned, gently used, pristine, like new, or a little ugly. Anyway, what's going on? Too. Do you really? We do a little ugly. Yeah. Okay. Occasionally. Occasionally. Actually, okay. I've got this car that, that keeps showing up on my website that's like, it's an old burnt out Chevy, and it just shows up on random pictures on my website right no now. No kidding. We can't figure out where it came from. Really? Now, what yeah. did you pay to have that done? I, I don't know. <laughs> One of my sales consultants sends me the picture. It's this orange, orange vehicle that's like sh charred. Really? And it shows up under a GMC Arcadia. No kidding. Yeah. Well, wow. Aren't you lucky? Yeah, I am. What a mm -hmm. challenge that is to hey, get listen, dealt with. I want to ask. I know you, you said you've been doing this for 200 weeks. Do you take a week off during the year at all? Very seldom. I'm, if any, Do you it miss might a be Saturday? one. Well, I have once or twice, I think I have, but not, not many. How long ago? Was that years ago? No, I think last year I took a, a Saturday off, I think. Oh, okay. But we usually plan everything around this. Around this, <laughs> right? But I have a good, a good couple stand-ins. I've, I've hired, I've hired Dan Gaffney to fill oh, in yeah. for me before, and he did a great job. And um, I think Colin and somebody else has done it before. So um, I think I'm gonna let Colin, Colin, Katie, do it next time, just next for the time. fun of it. Maybe Jack Riddle, maybe Kevin Short, maybe Ryan. Maybe we'll <laughs> let all of you. Come. I don't know if I could do but, it. For, I don't know if I could do it the entire show. Three hours. It's not that long. Just don't drink nothing beforehand. <sighs> nothing. Nothing. Oh, okay. You know, I have had that much water today, though. I got so, you. 
But anyway, so Pittsville Ford is happening. Everybody it's I talk to says they've come down, they've talked to you. Um, they just came down to look around, and next thing you know, they're driving out in a new car. What's that about? That's the idea. Oh, that's the idea. Oh, it's a ploy. <laughs> it's a ploy. It's a ploy. It's a ploy. In other words, so, but uh, people like dealing with you. They like the deals. They like the easy financing. They like the fact that you take trades. Yeah. And I think I think that we're different because we like to have a little bit of fun. I think. Yes, I think tradition. I think traditionally, when you go into a dealership, a lot of people are intimidated. Mm -hmm. You know, they're they're dealing with people that. Uh, I would think people have to get you to get serious. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Ryan. I'm <laughs> really here to buy a car. Okay. Ninety nine percent of the time, we actually do work. Like if you follow our Facebook and things like that, I mean, we do we we post a lot of the things on the lighter side. We do. So we we try to have a good time. I agree, and it looks like it. And how's Gino holding up? Oh, it's great. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay, and on the side, he's a professional dancer? <laughs> Apparently. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> he's, right. just, he's working on his moves all the I time. I can tell that. All the time, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So. But he does a good job. He does a great job for us. He knows a lot of people in the area. My manager. Oh, is he from around here? We're all from Seaford. Okay, okay. Yeah, so my now manager, I'm getting it. Coleman, Coleman and Gino, they're both from uh, Seaford. I'm from Seaford as well, too. So. Okay. We so make... we need to get some Seaford school teachers on this show. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. To say, how were these gentlemen when they were in school? And, the, and she'll be like, Ooh. what gentlemen are you speaking of? We are on our <laughs> It's my 20th, my 20th year reunion. Really? Yeah. We should get your graduating class on the show. Oh, yeah, I'd like to get the whole and graduating say, class. Hey, I haven't seen a lot of them. What was Ryan? Oh, we can, we can um, get them on here no matter where they're at in the country. Oh, yeah, we can find them. In other words, and we'll bring him on the whole show and yeah. say, tell us, yeah. how was Ryan? Was he always this nice and friendly and kind and willing to give a good deal? Or <laughs> how was I he? I think most it? people would remember me because I used to draw. Did you really? Yeah. I wanted to be an artist up until like 10th grade, yeah. Really? Yeah. So what did you draw? Plants, flowers? Just anything. Dollar bills? Cartoons. Okay. Yeah. All you were the creator things. of the fifteen dollar bill. I was amazing. Wow. I thought I was good at art, but I haven't drawn in a long time. Yeah. Did you go to college? I did. I went to the University of Delaware for two years. I took a semester off, and eighteen years later, this is where I am. <laughs> You're gonna go back sometime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. go back sometime. I just took a little hiatus. Right. Yeah. I well, just wanted me. to see if I liked this field, and then you right. know, I'll go back and finish right. what I got to finish. Wow. So, um, what kind of grades did you get in high school? Pretty good grades. Did you really? Yeah. All right. I should have well, applied myself a little more, but... What do you wish you'd have done? Um, probably worked a little harder. I, 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 I got great grades, don't get me okay. wrong, but I didn't really try either. Okay. You so you, I mean? you, now your, your regrets are, what would have happened in school if I'd have really tried? If I'd really tried, yeah. Wow. But I wouldn't give up. I wouldn't trade what I do now for a career, my family, anything like that for where I am right now. And tell me this, were you into sports? I was. Basketball. <laughs> a little bit. Not as much as everybody thinks. Really? I wasn't. I wasn't, no. I played soccer for the majority of, of my childhood, yeah. Okay. Quite a bit. I get volleyball asked a lot, too. Really? Were you a basketball player? Were you a volleyball player? <laughs> so it's usually those two. Yeah. Those two. Yeah. Wow. But now you like selling automobiles. Yeah, and it's going to be a rainy day today. Is it? Can't go okay. to the beach. Busy day, rainy Can't day? Really? Oh, yes. Yes. So come on out and test drive a vehicle. It's a good opportunity for you. I don't usually talk about the deals, but really right now I'm excited about uh, some of Ford's best-selling vehicles, the Edge, the Escape, and the Explorer. You get up to $3,000 and 0% financing for really? seven, two months. Yeah. 0% for six years? Yeah. 0% is usually only for two or three years. Oh, yeah. 0% for six And $3,000 in rebates. But look at the savings on no interest. Yeah, it's huge. And taking trades? Oh, taking any trade. Any trade. Ch All even right. charred orange GMC. Oh, vehicles. my gosh. What about an old Volkswagen camper? We'll take it. Really? Yeah. Volkswagen bus. We've we've traded boats. We've traded motorcycles? Law lawnmowers. Motorcycles, yes. Motorcycles. Really? Yeah. We traded a... Um, what are those, the hovercrafts from uh, No like way. You still got a hovercraft? We traded one of those, yeah. That is something. We don't still have it. We sold it pretty quick. That is something not. I've always wanted. Yeah. Because you can go right from being on the land right into the water, out on the land. Yeah, uh, I just, 
I don't. I didn't realize somebody around here would have one of those. Me either. I've never really seen. I've one. I've never seen person. one here. But yeah, we sold it pretty quick. It was really? like two or three years ago. Yeah. So if you got something you want to trade, Ryan wants to talk. Yeah, we can take a look at it. If you got nothing but a boatload of cash, he wants to talk. <laughs> yeah. If you want to finance a vehicle, he wants to talk. We just want to talk. Just want to talk. Yeah. Yeah. If you're bored, and maybe you'll go. You just want to you'll go home in a new car. Huh? Right. There's a good chance. Probably a 99 percent chance. chance. Yeah. Right. All right, so it's Pittsville Ford. It's in Pittsville. Pittsville. So it was a Ford dealership. They built the town all. <laughs> now they're going to have to expand the town to reach out to the new Pittsville. They Ford. have to, yeah. Now that okay. we're moving up the Route 50, we're going to have to, uh, you know, the town's going to have to move with us. Okay. We're not that far away. It's only it's only like a block down. Oh, so. my gosh. Yeah, yeah. Almost able to walk it. Yeah, yeah, you can walk it. You can walk. You it. can absolutely. Yeah. All right, Pittsville Ford. You want to give out what phone number? An eight hundred number, number. Your cell, cell phone, phone number. number. Here we go. Cell phone number. Three zero two eight four one seven seven three eight. Eight four one seventy seven thirty eight. Correct. I'd like somebody to call it now, and just say good morning to Ryan. Eight four one seventy seven thirty eight. Is that right? Not Colin. Not Colin. Oh, it's Colin Dylan? No, don't do that, Colin. Okay, just checking. <laughs> Colin's All right. paying attention to everything that's going on. So you're on there now. today till there today. three, four, five. Uh, at least six o'clock. At least six o'clock. At least. So if you're working and you get off work and you want to put this man to the test, go on down there and meet him. Is Gino working today? Gino is working today. Gino is working today. Well, we'll okay. Come to you. Uh, I forgot that. Yeah. Right. So just call. Yeah. Eight four one. Seven seven three eight. Eight four one seven seven three eight. Three eight. <laughs> Anything else? Nope. Do you ever eat ice cream at Vanderwin's? Yes. Do you like it? You gave me a gift certificate last week. I haven't Did used you? it yet. Yes, it was delicious. Really? Yeah. Okay. Did you take the kids? Yeah, the kids love it. Really? Kids All love right. it. Yes, and you were saying early, do, do, do people eat ice cream that early? Uh, yes. Really? Children do, anyway. Okay. Get some going. Yeah, get some going. <laughs> right. All right, anything else? Nope. Thanks. Have a good day, okay? You too. Go sell Bye. something now. All right. So check him out. Good guy. If you are tired of, you know, high pressure and all that, just, just go on down there and check him out. He'll take good care of you. You know, I want to talk about Integrity Pest Solutions. This is my friend Keith Ruark. Man, I'll tell you, it's crazy. Ever since I met him, now I'm looking for pests. So I'm in my office the other day, and there was all these bugs in there. And, man, he come out and said, oh, they're this and that and all that, took care of it, no problem. And, like, man. I'm just so happy with him. So in a, it's refreshing. It's refreshing. So when you hear me talk about these different businesses on the show, <coughs> they're people I deal with and that I'm happy with. Ryan McCracken, bought a vehicle from him, very happy with him. I liked how he handled it, you know, the level of service he's given me before, during, and after the sale. So I'm just letting you know if you need any help with any kind of pest solutions, okay? You know, things like, um, oh, what was I going to say? I got my notes here, but like I have had ants before that I've had to deal with spiders, wasps, hornets, things like that. Crickets, silverfish, stink bugs, stink bugs. I had a building that had them. I don't have them anymore. I love it. Anyway, so all I'm saying is he does all of Sussex and Kent County. His name is Keith Ruark. His estimates are free. People always say, well, how much is it? How much is it? Well, wouldn't you want him to look at your place? Wouldn't you want him to come out and make sure that he's giving you the right price? I think if somebody gives you a price over the phone without even looking at anything, chances are that's padded pretty good. So you want the real price. So anyway, all you got to do is give Keith a call. His phone number is 858-8629. That's 858-8629. Or you can text him at that number, okay? You give him a call, say, I heard about you on Jim's show. Um, what kind of specials you got running? What can you do for me? How can you help me out? I'm just telling you. There's plenty of people that offer pest solutions, but there's nobody I've ever met, and I've been in business a long time and had a lot of properties. Keith has been one of the most knowledgeable people I've come across and very thorough. I found his prices to be spot on. In fact, I was a little impressed. They were a little bit more competitive than I thought they would be. So give him a call. All right, check him out. Also, look him up on Facebook, Integrity Pest Solutions, if you would there. And his website is integrity dash PestSolutions.com. All right, termite inspections, whatever you may need. Now, let's talk about Atlantic Home Improvements. Another guy that I am just can't say enough good about. It's my friend. They're all my friends. Because if I do business with you, I do a lot of business with you because I got a lot of things going on. 
So, you know, I've got many houses and properties, so I'm always needing something fixed. And so I have really grown to lean on Mark Johnson and his partner, Don Lindsay, in reference to anything I need for my properties, okay? So they can handle little things, big things. They're not looking to remodel your house. They're not looking to add an addition. There's things I've asked him to do that he says, Jim, you would spend your money better if you just let me give you a little input and guidance, but this is who you should get to take care of this or take care of that. But just the other day, I had a building that I needed a new deadbolt and doorknob. Just spur of the moment. And he knocked that thing out, took care of it, no big deal. But, you know, he did a good job of taking care of it. So anyway, if you need something done, whether it's a handyman thing, you need something fixed, something installed, something replaced, give him a call and see if it's something he can do. Very knowledgeable, been in business 20-some years. Um, he used to own that granite place. And so he knows construction and he knows, you know, houses and stuff like that. And he sold it and he kind of got bored. So he started this new business called Atlantic Home Improvements and Handyman Service, and he'll do a good job. Him and Don and uh, the team he's got there will help you out. So his phone number, are you ready? 302, of course, 500-1033. No, wrong number. 500-0133. 0133. 500 -0133. Like his Facebook page, too. Atlantic Home Improvements on Facebook. And you can also um, check him out. His estimates are free. He'll give you a call. No job too big, too small. He'll just tell you whether it's something that he's the best one to get or you might be better served to get somebody else. So that's just some good free advice. Now we're going to talk to a young lady who really is very knowledgeable of social media. Okay. In other words, her name is Stacy Hitch. Is that correct? That is correct. And this is RJ's better half. Yes. Right? It's 25 years Monday. 25 years Monday married. So anyway, um, just want to say, if you are a person, hey, George. So if you are a person who says, I'm not real knowledgeable of Facebook and things like that, she's going to give us a couple social media tips. But also, if you own a business and you say, I want to do more on Facebook, she has customers. I don't even know if she's looking for many more or not. But if you need help with your social media you know, for your business or you want somebody to do a daily or weekly or monthly post or whatever, she's very affordable and she can help you with that, okay? You don't have to know a whole lot to hire her if you want her to help you with social media. Is that right? That is correct. They just need to know how to dial a phone, dial a phone. or send you a message yep. and a write the check to pay you. Contact me through Facebook. I'll All right. So, that's so anyway, how are you doing today? Great. Great. You're up here. You're uh, helping out with some pictures. Yes, I am. And uh, we've got people coming and going here today, don't we? Yes, we do. It's, so, it's all right. So it's here. Trinity Social Media. Yes. Okay. And you have businesses that pay you to do Facebook posts. It's not just Facebook. It's I keep just saying Facebook, but it's other things. Yes, I also Instagram. do Instagram, Pinterest, and Pinterest. Um, LinkedIn. Some depending on the business. Okay. Okay. And um, Twitter. And what you can it? custom design what somebody needs or wants. In other words, yes, if somebody says... Yes, I have says, some just want a couple. And right. If this is your budget, she'll work with you. If this is your budget, she'll work with you. Yes. If this is your budget, she'll work with you. Absolutely. So, but anyway, you know, very easy to deal with. Local... Where'd you go to school at? Sussex Central. Sussex Central. Now, what would your teacher say? We um, miss her? Darn. We're sorry she graduated? No. I don't know. I was okay. kind of... I stayed out of trouble. Did you really? Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. I ran to trouble. So, no, yeah. trouble made its way to me. I got more trouble on the road than I did in school. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, so do you have any tips or points you want to make um, well, about anything? Far, you know, as far as businesses, you know, Facebook is making a lot of changes yes. with um, advertising and um, narrowing down what you can pick mm -hmm. as far as... Um, Categories. You know, categories, age, um, maybe special interest. Okay. Things like that. Um, that ha It's rolling out, I think, July 7th is the final thing. So there'll be some hurdles with that. All There's the more changes the July 7th? It's around that date. I don't know the exact date. It kind of comes up on my screen. Really? On the back end. Yeah. So, and um, that should be interesting, especially... Um, with but the political aspect oh, of things. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
But you're saying you can help navigate that if somebody yeah. wants help. I mean, in other words. Yeah, right now I've been taking some, um, you take some online classes to keep a brush of everything. And okay. Kind of tells right. you of all the changes and it works. When did you first hear about Facebook? Uh, well, did my, you live in Del Mar? Yes. Okay, because Del Mar, in, I, does I it get, does Del Mar hear about things before somebody in Lincoln would? Like yes. the people in Lincoln hear about Facebook yes. the same time people in Del Mar yes, did. Yes, because we're close to Salisbury. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> and that's the hub. That's where everything's decided. Yeah, Salisbury's okay. the hub. Okay, <laughs> all right. So, anyway, have you been involved with Facebook a long time, or did you say, oh, it's gonna, it's a fad, it's going to pass? I actually, I, I started building websites as a need and just got started a Started building websites? And um, because a company I worked for needed a website, so I really? just kind of... Bought a book, um, Get probably how town. to for dummies. And now you're building websites, Steve. And figured See it ya. out, and hey. um, and then I, you know, social media came into play. Um, my daughter wanted a Facebook, and I wasn't going to let her have one until you checked it out. I checked it out, and I was like, oh man, this will be great if they opened it up for businesses. I could oh, see that. Oh, you saw the potential. I seen the potential then, so I t I started learning everything wow. I could. Wow. So you read a book and learned how to make websites. Yeah. But you're not looking for website work. No, no. Okay. People so. have a hard time uh, giving you what you need to finish them. What? Yes. Okay. All right. So anyway, what you're saying is, but you're looking for people that might want help with Facebook. Yes. All right. So anyway, what else is going on in your world? You getting ready to be a grandmom? Yes. Around okay. July 27th. Really? Is it a boy or a girl? Boy. Boy, do you know how to handle babies? Very much so. Very much so. Okay, are and they going to let you babysit? Yes, I'm going to be babysitting one day a week. Really? Mm-hmm. All right. And my son turns 16 July when? 3rd. July 3rd. Wow, what a month. Yeah. That's kind of cool, huh? Yeah. So you're going to be a grandmother in July? Yes. And your son turns 16? Yes. And he's got his first job? Yes. Working hard? Yes, he's working at McKinsey's uh, Blueberry Farm. McKinsey's Blueberry Farm. Yes, over in Frankfurt. Uh, really? Yep. Now, what do they do? Make blueberries? Grow blueberries? They grow blueberries, and you pick them. Really? <laughs> go, people go there and pick them. And then after you pick a blueberry, what do you do with it? You eat it. Really? Hey, <laughs> Chemi I... Chemicals and all. No, they oh. don't put on um, very few. All right. And you got to with bugs, though, right now. I would agree with that. But anyway, I wanted to also say good morning to Cool Bobby B. Do you know Cool Bobby B? Just by what you uh -oh. have said about him. I talk about him all the time. She's like, I never knew who he was until Jim. Jim thinks he's, like, famous. So, anyway, Bob Backman, good morning to you. I got to spend some time with him yesterday. So, anyway, what else? Anything else? Or How would somebody get a hold of you? Oh. I, well, I forgot Facebook that. Facebook most of the time. Um, well, or they can what, call. what would they look up? The exact name. I've called you Stacy so far. Oh, Trinity, S M M. Okay. Dot com, All right, or Trinity. they can just look me up on uh, Facebook, Stacy right. Hitch. Stacy Hitch, or Trinity Social Media, or S. Would you call it S S M? Okay. And actually, um, my phone number's on Facebook too. That okay. seems like where everybody gets it. So. All right. Well, people tell me people don't call people on the phone anymore, but I sure no. get enough phone calls. So, yes, you do. I do. You get a lot of phone calls. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to let you go. Is All right, that okay? No You're going to hang around? Yes. Till 10? Till 10. All right. So if anybody wanted to talk to her, just come on down to Smith. <laughs> She's here. All right. Real quick, I want to talk about ducking car wash, if I could. All right. Um, ducking car wash. They are open today, I think. But rainy days, I think it's weather permitting. But they're open seven days a week, okay? And it's duckingcarwash.com on the web. But in Seaford, they're right there on the highway. And in Milford, they're right there behind Wawa. So if you happen to need to get your car cleaned, if you are looking for a great gift idea for somebody, Ducking Car Wash have, has gift cards. But it's a car wash. So whether you just want to duck in, get a real simple one, or you want something real involved, they have all kinds of different packages, and they'll get your vehicle clean, whether it's a car, an SUV, a pickup, or whatever. And it's called Ducking Car Wash in Seaford or Milford, duckingcarwash.com. They have two Facebook pages, one for Seaford and one for 
Milford. So you can like both of their Facebook pages, okay? So check them out. they got different specials, lots of things going on. I don't even know if they ever have a special because their prices are so that going good. But they do have a discount. If you have a Weller's discount card, you can use it and save $3 off the Extreme, and you can use it and save 3 bucks every single time you use the card, okay? So it's duckingcarwash.com, two locations, Milford and Seaford. They'll take good care of you, locally owned, locally operated, good people. They support many families. They're in business, and they've got about 60 employees. So anyway, it's the Duck King Car Wash, open seven days a week, weather permitting. All right? So we're here inside Smith's Cafe. There are some people gathering. Some people are coming. Some people are going. I've seen um, some different people that I know come and go. So we're here. We're going to be here with you on the air till 10 o'clock this morning. If you want to stop in and say hi, just feel free to do so. All right. We've got different guests. I think my next guest in a couple minutes um, is going to be Chris from Wellers. We're going to talk about different things at Wellers, what's going on. Um, rainy days are usually a busy day at Wellers. And um, so it might be a good day to think about buying a shed or a trailer or something like that. But we are here. We're going to take a quick break from the radio, but for anybody on the radio, just switch over to Jim Weller's Facebook page and you won't miss a thing because we're just going to keep right on rolling with the show. So anyway, we're going to talk to Colin Walls here from Walls Service Center in Milford, which is going to be open in about one minute. Okay, so if you were wondering what time they open today, they open at 8 o'clock and the phone lines will be on and you can give a call and see if they can help you out. So, Colin, are you ready or am I rushing you over there? No, no I'm ready. I'm okay, ready to go. so let's talk about Wall Service Center. Yep, we are open right now or we okay. will be in 30 seconds or 30 something. seconds, they okay. wait until 8 o'clock to turn the lock. Right, I don't right. think so, no. Turn the what? Turn the locks. Turn the locks, Turn right, lock in other words. So they get there earlier and make early and make sure everything's ready to go. They're ready to hit the ground running. That's right. Get but the we air have no idea. On. Huh? Got to get the air compressor turned on and all the locks right. and everything. So we're ready. But to we have no idea if they are ready for work or not. Well, they're ready for work. They could be work. full. Right. I mean, if they have any openings today, any openings now is the time to call. It's the time to call right now, yep, and see if there are any openings for today and if you need an oil change or something. You know, we don't do big jobs on Saturdays. We're only open until noon. But, right. But uh, we can do breaks and, and AC work and other things, too. All right. Wiper blades. We can do wiper blades, yep. Just yep. a thought since it's raining yeah, out. exactly. So Wall Service Center is downtown Milford yep. celebrating 60 years of serving the community. Right. Locally owned, locally operated, mm -hmm. friendly, knowledgeable staff. Yep, and many so years of parts. air conditioning work, too. Many cars. years of it. Many, many years. So if your car's air conditioning is underperforming, we get that all the time. We got one yesterday I did that it just wasn't cooling. You know, it, it was right. it was kind of, on a cool day. It wasn't was okay, living up to its potential. But a hot day, exactly. But a hot day, it just wasn't doing what it should do. And we can check that out, figure out what the problem is. Maybe it's just a little bit low on refrigerant, or it could even be a blend door actuator. You know what I'm I know about that. There, right? I do. I've heard of them yeah. on this so show, actually, it's, the blend it's door actually, actuator. It, yep, it's the door that can, changes the temperature in there, so it moves it, it from hot to cold. It blends it. Yeah, and there's a little motor that controls it on most cars, and uh, it can go bad. They go bad all the time. All right, and you can handle that. We can handle it. We did one last week or the week before that the whole dash had to come out to do the blend door actuator. Really? Yeah. Yep. Wow. But whatever it needs, the main thing is get your appointment scheduled right. and get your vehicle to Wall Service Center. And from that point on, you don't have to worry about anything. Well, especially with air conditioning, because we're not going to send you somewhere else. Right. We are the shop that does all of it. We're the shop that gets referred to for the big And if you have, have three have complicated jobs at one time, it's no problem because you can handle more than one job at uh, one time. We can, yeah. Yep. So, in other words, don't worry. It doesn't mean if your job is complicated or the one before you is. It doesn't matter. They're working on multiple things at one time. What right. do you have, five bays there? Five bays, yep. yep. Yep, so you're doing oil changes and brakes and air conditioning work all at the same time, more or less. Yeah, we are. Exactly, okay. yeah. And, and there's a lot going on there, and it's busy, and, you know, we, we can take, uh, you know, if your car breaks down over the weekend. Just get it towed there. Just get it towed there. Get it to us because it's no good to you the way it is. And the sooner it's you get it on the fixed, property. It's not just sitting there, so just right. get it to us and let us get it in the rotation and get it on the schedule. And, you know, sometimes we have appointments that don't show up. Yeah. And then we can get it in and get it checked or out. Or you get right in the middle there. of a job and need some parts. Exactly. That way right. you can switch over to the next job. Right. Yep. Okay. Yep. So anyway, best way to reach us is by phone. 422-8110. Wallservicecenter.com on the web. Downtown Milford. We're at 220 Northeast Front Street. Okay. 
All right, check them out, everybody. That's where I get my stuff worked on. Very happy with them. Dealt with them for years, and um, so on and so forth. So we're with you here on My Cozy TV, and I want to tell you, if you need to get up and get rolling, first of all, if you're watching on Facebook, I just thought of that. Hit the share button, if you would. Hit the share button. We're on five different... I hold up both hands. Five different Facebook pages, okay? So we have quite a sizable audience. We have no idea how many people we're talking to because they come and they go and so on and so forth. But we're just letting you know that this show's on My Cozy TV, and that's where you may be watching right this minute. Um, I think we're in all of Sussex County and parts of Maryland. So we appreciate you watching the show, okay? But we're also on Delaware 105.9 radio station, but we're on break from radio right this minute. But if you're watching on Facebook or TV and you say, man, I got to get in my car and I got to get rolling and I can't take my TV with me, I just want to let you know you can also listen to the show on Delaware 105.9. We're on there till 9. We're on TV till 10. We're on Facebook till 10. And when all else fails, you can go to WellerDoesDelmarva.com and you can watch the shows. They're all there and they're labeled and they're numbered and the dates are on them and so on and so forth. So I just want to let you know you got many, many options, which also means let's say you're a person that wants to advertise. Well, this is a pretty well advertised show. So I'm letting you know that if you were happen to be on this show, whether you bought an interview or a mention or something like that, um, you're going to be on Facebook, five different pages. You're going to be on TV. You're also going to be on the radio, and it's also going to be captured so that people go back and can watch it again or again. So I don't think there's any kind of advertising, whether it's print, radio, or TV, where they're combining all of it like we are. So we have a very good audience. We're on our 250th show, so we've been doing it for a little while, and I'm um, just letting you know. So we don't work for the TV station. We don't work for the radio station. Me and Colin actually just uh, own our own businesses, and we're doing this show. We're on the radio. So we're back. We're not. That's fine. Okay. Prep for the radio. Now we're on the radio. So anyway, from a radio audience, thanks a lot. If you've never seen the show, check out My Cozy TV, okay? Check it out there. Or just look up Jim Weller on Facebook, and you can see the show there. I do want to talk about my chiropractors. I got a couple of them that I really like. One of them is Dr. T, Dr. Trillia. He's the owner of Peninsula Chiropractic Center in Seaford. Many people say, man, I've known him for a long time. He is a good guy, good community guy too, okay? Then he has Dr. Bud who works with him, who's also a good guy. Between the two of them, they can help you, whether you got a knot in your neck, a kink in your neck, your arm don't feel right, your hip's out of joint, whatever it is, they can help you out. And they know their limitations. If they can't help you out, they will steer you in the right direction. They also have a massage therapist there named Linda. So if you need a massage or chiropractic care, whatever you need, or if you need all of it, they can help you out. If you don't know what your insurance covers or doesn't cover, you give a call and talk to Joyce and say, Joyce, what's my insurance going to cover or not cover? And they can help you out. Now, I'm going to give you a free offer. This is something a lot of people have took advantage of. Some people say, I've been to a chiropractor. I never got the results I wanted. I'm frustrated. Well, I'm going to give you a way that you could check out Peninsula Chiropractic Center, no charge. Some people say they've never been to a chiropractor in their life, and they're nervous or uncomfortable, and they're not sure it will work. Here's where this free offer is going to come in. No copay, no deductible, no charge. Basically, what you're going to do is you give a call to 629-4344, 629-4344, and say, hey, heard about you on Jim's show. I want to make an appointment for that that uh, free consultation. You'll meet with Dr. T or Dr. Bud. They'll sit down with you. They'll talk to you and they'll say, hey, what you've got wrong, we think chiropractic care will help. What you've got wrong, we don't think chiropractic care will help. And we think you might want to consider checking out this doctor or that doctor. And they'll just give you some suggestions. This will cost you absolutely nothing. It's a free offer as a benefit of watching or listening to this show. So the phone number is 629-4344, 629-4344. It works best if you dial it in that order. And it's PeninsulaChiroCenter.com on the web. And you can look them up on Facebook, too, if you would. All right, we're going to move right into our next guest, which is Chris, who is from Weller's Utility Trailers. And Chris, good morning to you. Good morning, Jim. How's it going? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. Is it raining hard or not too hard? It's not raining at all. Oh, good, because uh, rainy days are busy at Weller's. I'm sure yes. you've already experienced that. And uh, just want to let you know that uh, we're going to be open today at 9 o'clock. 9 to 1. 9 to 1. And you're in sales? Yes. And you're in the mood to sell something? We've had a long week, and we want to sell some trailers. Okay, we are ready. 
been a little hot, people a little muggy. So just want to let you know if you need a trailer, Chris is your guy. Yep, you can come see me, uh, Bert, Sean, Jason, and Terry will be there today. Okay. The, so we're ready to make a deal. We ready got some uh, trailers on sale right now. Uh, today's the last day of Terry's terrific deals. I forgot about that. So half of them are gone. Half of them are gone. Uh, but there's still a, some left. Got a couple generators, got a couple trailers left. And uh, so if you're looking for a deal, today's the last day for Terry's terrific deals. So come in. Check them out. Um, and I got them on the Facebook page as well, so you can take okay. a look at before you come in. Weller's Utility Trailers on Facebook. If everybody would like that page, so if you haven't liked Weller's Utility Trailers, please do so. Now, sheds are going pretty good. People are getting them in and out. Yep, um, they're they're going hard. They're going Did quick. Did somebody say next week we're getting two or three loads of sheds in? We got three loads in this week. We're getting three loads in next week. Okay. Uh, I mean, as soon as they're coming in, they're going. Right. Right, that's the thing. So uh, good turnaround time. Everybody yep. seems pretty happy. Uh, we try very hard to price our sheds very competitively. Um, I, Whenever I bump into somebody that's bought a shed, they like the shed, but they seem to like the fact that we're about 10% below everybody else. Yes. So um, that seems to be a big thing. But you come from another place down in West Virginia that sold sheds and things. I mean, how do our sheds look? I mean, in other words... I mean, I don't have any problems. We don't have any warranty issues. Nobody Good. calls us complaining about the delivery driver or anything. Because um, it's all Amish made. All Amish made. The Amish are on the scene <laughs> when it's delivered, you know. Yep. Uh, professional people from the time they build it to the time it's delivered. Nothing but respect for uh, Rodney, who delivers our buildings. Mm -hmm. And uh, they sure. do great special orders. Their lead times are right in line with everybody else. Yep. They even offer a nice discount if you buy a building from the lot. Oh, really? 5% yeah. I 5 think? 5% discount yeah. if you buy a building from the lot. So, I mean, how can so you why that? wouldn't you? Yeah. And there's a large selection of them. Yeah, but we've so. probably got about 50 buildings on the lot. Yeah, and they come and go. Like yeah. you say, every day right. they're coming and going. So that's that, okay? And um, do we sell many kayaks? We have been. Um, this is the time of year that it's really going to start pushing again because now it's hot. People are going on vacation. They want the kayaks. Get out and about. We got a couple kayaks that are on sale. Oh, so, that's right, yeah. yeah. We have an ad that comes out, and it's really working well. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Um, and every week it has a different title. So, in other words, it could be Terry's Terrific Deals. One has your name, Chris. Next week is mine is Chris's Competitive, competitive Deals. Okay, because Chris is rather competitive. But what we're saying is it's a weekly ad that comes out in the center of the guide. But... You can see it at wellers.com uh, mm -hmm. almost a week in advance. Correct. Because people are like, well, by the time I get the guide in the ad, half of them are already sold. And it's because we have people literally waiting for things to go on sale. Our our Chris's competitive ad came out two days ago. Okay. And I have a lady that's going to be buying the golf cart off of that, and it's not even in the guide yet. Really? She saw it. Called saw it me. on the website. Yep. Came in, looked at it, financed it. Really? So we can uh, finance golf we carts? We can finance golf carts. Okay. I picked up a new financing company as oh, well. Oh, okay. Uh, better interest rate for people with really good credit. We do okay. have them for decent credit and not so good credit as well. We can work with everybody. Yes. Okay. So don't be afraid if you think you have bad credit or bad credit in the past. Right, just give us a shot yep, at it. We can help you. Yeah, we got away. We're full of solutions. Yes. Full of solutions. We want you to have what you want. Right. That's your right. We want you to have good air conditioning <laughs> and to have what you want. And I will be so. heading over to his place next week because I have an AC unit in my truck oh, really? that went bad. Wow. So we'll I'll be seeing you soon. You won't <laughs> believe this, Chris. If he had to, not every job needs this, but it's a crazy thing. If you put in a new air conditioning compressor at Wall Service Center, it comes with a lifetime guarantee. Nothing on my vehicle nope. has a lifetime guarantee. Nope. I, I, I'm always just amazed at the quality of parts that he uses. So, But anyway, Weller's Utility Trailers is open, 337-8228. Um, anything else you want to say or add? or? Yeah, I mean, we just really appreciate the business we've had. Um, you know, swing sets are really doing really well. Amish so made. We have vinyl swing sets. It is not wood. It is right. vinyl. Right. So, you know, it's going to last a lot longer. 20-year limits no of warranty. No splinters for the kids. No splinters. Uh, you know, their turnaround time has been absolutely fantastic. Yes. In fact, I think now they come on about the second Tuesday of every month. Correct. So July a, something, yep. July 10th, I think. If we can get a big load in, uh, 
couple orders, they'll even be quicker than that. Oh, quicker than once quicker a month. Quicker than that. Okay. Well, once a month, I feel, is a great thing as Absolutely. far as. Absolutely. But these are Amish-made vinyl swing sets, all stainless steel hardware. You know, it's salt-treated lumber wrapped in vinyl. They're pretty much maintenance-free. You know, yep. just power wash it now and then. But uh, the kids love them, and uh, we have five of them out there on yeah, display you can I come think. over uh, and let the kids play while you buy a trailer yeah Just make sure somebody's out there watching them and yes by please the road. yeah we don't <laughs> as salespeople, we don't watch your kids <laughs> all right anything else no sir i gotta get okay. going go get ready to sell all right three three seven eight two two eight wellers.com there's chris there's his brother sean we got to get sean on here soon yes chris sean then we have um bert is going to be on staff today is that Correct. right yep. okay all right. Oh, okay. Well, anything else? No, sir. Wellers.com. Thanks a lot, Chris. Thank you. Have a good day, okay? Thank you. Take care of yourself. All right. That was Chris, and uh, we have been very fortunate to get him and his brother on board. And um, we do have one more opening for another salesperson if somebody's interested. Um, stop in and talk to Terry or Jason or send your resume. First Class Heating and Air, I want to remind you that this is who I go to. These are my go-to people for heating and air conditioning. Great company. I'm very happy with them. Whether I need a service call, need something fixed, whether I want a brand new system, whether I want to extend some duct work, have something taken care of, they're a really good company. They're first class. Their vehicles are lettered. I know that doesn't sound like a big deal, but at least you know they, that it's a company vehicle. They're lettered. They, uh, their people are wearing uniforms. They're trained. They know what they're doing. They stand behind what they do. They also have an incredible financing offer. If you need a new heating and air conditioning system, six years, 0%. 72 months, 72 months, 0% interest on a new heating and air conditioning system at First Class Heating and Air. So check them out. Look them up on Facebook. Like their page, First Class Heating and Air. Um, you can look them up online at firstclasshvac.com. They also do plumbing. They also do home performance. They've been in business over 40 years. So it's a great company to deal with, okay? And that's what we try to do here at Weller's. De Weller Does Delmarva is give you great companies to deal with. So check them out, First Class Heating and Air, 934-8900, 934-8900, firstclasshvac.com, and like I say, like their Facebook pages. Now, one more company that I love dealing with, again, Everybody you hear me talk about, I almost deal with them weekly, okay? I've got 20-some properties. I got my business. I got my home. There's always something going on, whether it's heating and air, whether it's on my automobiles, wh whatever. So L&W Insurance is my go-to for insurance. Healthcare, life insurance, homeowners, liability insurance, umbrella policies. Um, anytime I'm getting ready to get into something new, I always give them a call and say, Am I adequately insured or what do I need if I want to start selling this product? Like we started selling golf carts. So that was a question for that. We started selling kayaks. That was a question for that because, you know, we're in the trailer and the shed business. So as I add things, I got to have an insurance agency that understands my needs. So Bill Strickland owns L&W Insurance Agency. Good company, good business. I've dealt with them for years. And it's L&W Insurance Company, 674 3400 is their number, 674-3400, lnwinsurance.com on the web. They've been in business 85 years serving our community. Good local company. Now, when you see Bill Strickland, he's not been in business himself personally 85 years, okay? He's a good-looking young man, but I'm saying he's not been in business 85 years. That would make him over 100 years old. He bought the business from Dave Wood. And it is L&W Insurance Agency. And it's my insurance guy. I like him a lot. I'm very happy with him. And if you need to talk to somebody, commercial, residential, or whatever, he's a good man. He's got good people. And he'll take good care of you. Okay? Okay. Speaking of good men, speaking of good people, here is our state treasurer, Ken Simpler. Nice to be here, Jim. Great to see good you. Good morning to you. Pleasure. And have you had anything to eat or just coffee? Uh, just coffee so just far. Just coffee. All Didn't right. Get over caffeinated. For All you right. Know. Well, that's good. So I am honored to have you here. So thank you for uh, it's my joining honor. us. Great to be here. I'd love to talk and, to um, people locally. All right. And just so you know, we are on TV and the radio and Facebook. So just want to make sure you know. I was well aware, and thank you. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for coming. Now, you are state treasurer. So part of what you do is you oversee, I guess, the budget and our money, and you look out for us. You know, I think that, you know, the job really falls into maybe I would call it, I think I would wear three hats. Okay. Three hats three is hats. the way I think about the job. And I think the 
The one that's the biggest is there really isn't a CFO for Delaware. So okay. the people of Delaware, you know, if you're if you're part of a company, uh, if you've been even part of a or any kind of organization, typically there's one senior fiscal officer for the whole okay. for the whole organization, right? right. Um, chief financial officer or controller, somebody that, that everything that's financial rolls up to. Right. But in state government, uh, you actually have. A state treasurer who's independently elected. I, okay. I, I work for you. Okay. Some people, so once in a while, I get a question whether I work for the governor. No, I work, right. for, I work for the people of Delaware. Um, but the governor has two cabinet secretaries, a secretary okay. of finance, a budget director. The le legislature, the General Assembly, has a controller general. Okay. You've really got at least four people, I would say, that are involved in the state's finances. And, and neither one, no one answers each other. We're all peers. Okay. So one thing that is different in coming to state government that I realized in my prior capacity, I was the chief financial officer of my organization. And, and instead, we have different functions are done by different people. But it's very important that we collaborate across those platforms to do the right things for the people of Delaware. Right. Um, Working together. It is important, uh, and and really, it's it's not that difficult for finance people. The one right. great thing about finance is uh, it's not as, at least in terms of its execution, it is it shouldn't be politically divisive. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be politically divisive to say we want to run our affairs in a manner that's certain and predictable. Right. It shouldn't be politically divisive to say. We want to get uh, the best value for every dollar we spend. Right. Whether people spend, think we spend too much or too little, we should get the best value for it. Right. right? Um, and and ultimately, what I really care about as as your as your I guess highest elected fiscal officers, I just want to be able to tell people that, again, regardless of whether you think we are doing the right things, the wrong things, we're, that as a people, we're on a sustainable path. Mm -hmm. that, that we're not going to run this enterprise off the road, and we're not going to end up in a ditch. Right. So. So everybody's keeping an eye on everything, Yep. working as a team. At the big picture level. So at the big picture level, um, I think how, when I think about finance and I think about why it's important, sometimes people feel that's disconnected. They care about, they care about their roads. They care about K through 12 education. They care about the fact the state is the largest uh, procurer of health care for people. Okay. Um, Safety, security, right? You name the thing that we do. We're a very large organization. The state of Delaware is the largest employer in the state of Delaware. And we, it do, is. we do just about everything. Um, so whatever your specific interest is, though, what's at the center of it? What's at the center of it is how do we manage our resources in a way that we're going to be able to provide those things with certainty, uh, that is sustainable, and at a high quality. And to me, that all comes back to our finance systems. That's what tells you what your resources are. Are you applying them towards your priorities? Are you getting better at what you're doing? Right. That, that's what's critical that a finance system does for the state. And that's why you know, I try to tell everyone that finance touches all of us. We all know money matters. We all care about money, right? But I think when I talk about a finance system, it's those things. Wow. And um, how long have you been in office? I've been in office uh, three and a half years now. So, I will, so I will, when will you run again? I will run this November. This November. This November. Yeah. 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 When, wow. the, when the calendar turned over in 2018, that was a wake up moment for me again. I remember, wow. I remember okay. that, uh, this interview process that is fairily lengthy, uh, you know, I got okay. to I got to re up re ante. So we also want to encourage people to get to know Ken Simpler as a as a candidate and as a as a you now you're a local businessman. Also, your family's from the area. Yep. You didn't just move here or anything like that. Grew up in Rehoboth Beach. Uh, I was just uh, <laughs> I was with one of the one of the Smith family members right here, just saying, having grown up in a restaurant business, my okay. family had the Avenue Restaurant in Rehoboth for a long time. Uh, back, if you can even imagine Rehoboth having only about three restaurants, that was wow. that was going back a ways. But uh, yeah, I grew up in a family restaurant, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You know, open all year round. Um, uh, grandparents, you know, sort of started it. So Great. you have experience in just you know you can't spend more than you make from an early age. Well, certainly I have experience with, and, and I think this is often also a misconception in government. I mean, a lot of what we see on TV or what we hear is about policy debates, right? Okay, policy debates. Yeah. I mean, you know, turn on the TV right now, what are we talking about? Probably immigration policy, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just dominating the news right now. But what you also, if you think a little bit harder about that story, a lot of what they're talking about is just execution. Like what I've learned in business and, and, and whether it was the restaurant business I started in or the, the finance career I moved on to or coming back and being part of a hotel and commercial real estate business is, and I think most business owners know this, right? inspiration is important, mm -hmm. but perspiration is really what gets the job done, right? right. I mean, it's 5% it's inspiration, 95% perspiration. And I, government's the same way. I think people think that it's just a matter of getting the policies right, but when I've now been working for three and a half years in the state's single largest employer, 
and, and we are a very, to some extent, decentralized organization. Just getting the execution part right. That, Taking again, it to the finish line. Get, just figuring out how do we, you know, we're a people business. More than half of our spend in the general fund is on our people. You know, it's, that's ha half every dollar goes to, to, to employee compensation. So are our people have the right tools? Are they incented to, to have their interests personally aligned with the organization's goals? Um, are they feel supported? Do they feel valued? Uh, you know, do we pay too much? Do we pay too little? Do we have the right staffing levels, the wrong staffing levels? Are we all on the same page? Basic stuff like that that you would think about in any organization, you know, that, you know, we have a big challenge. We have a big challenge to really, to, to get to excellence. Um, it, you know, it's, it's an execution and a cultural thing as much as it is about all getting the policies right. So Wow. So say somebody wanted to get to know about you. They've never met you or seen you. Is there any Facebook pages that you would sure. share somebody to? Yeah, absolutely. So we have, uh, well, you know, now that it is a campaign year. So okay, Norton, so it's like official. You're really campaigning. I, 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 I you know, through June 30th, and we're going to get to it, I know, but we have some very important legislation to talk right. about and, and the budget. But that, that you know, you know, once that wraps up, I still have an office to run every day. Um, but, yeah, officially I'd say campaign season sort of starts. So, yes, I have uh, um, KenSimpler.com is the campaign website. Okay. Um, but for those who want to, you know, understand a little bit better about what the state treasurer does, um, uh, you know, there's also the state treasurer's website, okay. treasurer.delaware.gov. Um, KenSimpler.com is the campaign site. And then on Facebook, yeah, um, uh, Ken Simpler for Delaware. Ken Simpler Facebook, for Delaware. Facebook, Instagram, and okay. at Ken Simpler Twitter. So we're, we're everywhere. And so if people don't know you, they need to get to know you. And you, you're looking for support to be our next state treasurer or just to continue what you're doing. Continue what I'm doing. And uh, I really do, you know, if I say nothing else on this pro program and people are listening, I, I have really loved the job the last three and a half years. I mean, I see so much. Uh, yes, we've talked a little bit about the challenges so far without specificity. And the challenges are, are really are, they're substantial. They're substantial to run this organization well. But that also means there's an enormous amount of opportunity. That's opportunity right. Opportunity to get better. Victories to be had. Victories wow. to be had. So, you got kids? I have three children. Um, and again, you know, to just to step back a second, I did grow up in Rehoboth. Okay. Um, uh, so, you spent I your time right there as spent, a kid? Spent time as a kid. Uh, ended up uh, uh, going uh, after college to Chicago. That's where I worked for okay. almost 16 years uh, you in do a finance there? career. I, was okay. in, I, w I, I, I worked and ran a, an investment company that was a global firm. So, okay. you know. Uh, effectively made investments, uh, managed money for for better part of my career out there. And then uh, when the third of my children was born and we were living in the city in downtown and I hadn't grown up that way, it was time to uh, okay. come come close to home. Okay. Uh, but I married, you know, married my college sweetheart from Cleveland. Uh, I thought it would be a little too much to bring her right back onto the family's doorstep in Rehoboth. Okay. So we live up in Newark, Delaware. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. All right, but you probably come down to the beach a lot. Come down to the beach a lot. Drove over there from there this morning. Uh, spent a little time you know, yesterday morning with your good friend Dan Gaffney. Yeah. So got to chat a little bit on the radio with him. Yeah, he does a good job. Uh, no. So the kids now are uh, one off to college, uh, one's in college, one's going off to college, and my son is uh, in high school. So it's a busy, good, good. you know, bu busy, busy time. Busy time to be a dad, uh, and I think most people can understand that the physical challenges are, are behind us, but, mm -hmm. you know, there's some... There's some uh, mental challenges. Well, happening. and then there's the empty nest syndrome around the corner. Um, yes, there so, is. Wow. Yes, there is. All right. So people could get to know you by looking you up on Facebook mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Is there something coming up that people need to dig into or be aware of? That, that you want to encourage people to talk to any of their legislators about? I really do, and uh, we actually have. I was just sitting over the table over here with uh, State Senator Bryant Richardson, who's in, uh, I think, having a little breakfast, as well as uh, Mayor David Genshaw right here from Seaford. And, um, you know, we were comparing notes around the budget, as you know, gets resolved by June 30th every right. year, except last year when we went all the way to July 3rd. Um, and going back to that point I made about Everyone understands in their personal finances that it's critical that you be able to figure out where your money's coming from. And, and, and also, most people in their personal lives can understand that they set priorities, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if, 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 if times get tight, you, you sort of 
tighten your belt in a way, not across the board. You right. don't just say, hey, I'm going to spend 85% less on electricity and 85%, right. you know, you know, you don't, you don't set your budget that way. You figure out what's what you need to prioritize. And, um, and moreover, when, when times are good, when you, when you actually have extra money that you might have gotten, you know, maybe you work in, maybe you're on a commission or something and mm -hmm. you get, you know, you get a little more income you thought than that year. Um, do you spend it all? Or do you just sort of say, hey, you know, um, the there's going to be, there's going to be, yeah, there's going to be some lean times. There's going to be some, there's going to be some flatter times. And I want to make sure I can provide for my family in all those situations. Running any organization, business, otherwise is not, not that much different. But the state of government, state of Delaware rather, has for 40 years um, had a simple test around how we think about how we manage our resources. And that test, and the reason I think sometimes people look at Dover and say, what are they doing from year to year, um, is that on its face, it sounds very responsible to have a test that says we never spend more in a year than the money that comes in. So in any given year, we don't spend more than what comes in. And that makes sense if your only goal is to be solvent from year to year. If, I want to just, we're yeah, going to break from the radio. Just if you're watching or listening on the radio and you want to continue seeing the show, just go to My Cozy TV or Jim Weller's Facebook page because we never stop there. Okay. Sure. So. Anyway, um, so is there something in particular or yes. do we need to? So for the first time, it, as opposed to just this year, trying to balance the budget and, and to put this in context, last year, if anyone can remember, we had a 10 percent deficit. Right. So the state government was wrestling with how to dead panic, dead panic, people jumping out of second story buildings in yeah. Dover, you know, tearing their garments. Um, and, you know, tearing their hair out. And, and the governor had just come in and, and, and he proposed that, you know, this deficit of 10% needs to be solved in a 50-50 in a manner. We're going to have to find some new revenue to solve half the problem. We're going we're gonna to cut expenditures mm -hmm. to solve another half of the problem. And that resulted in some surprises to people. We took the legislative session into July, something that hadn't happened, I don't think, in over 40 years. Right. Um, we kept, took extra sessions because it was very divisive. How do you do this? How do you... How do you raise revenues on people and how do you cut expenditures in a very short period of time? You know, we, right. didn't, we didn't really, it wasn't like part of a long-term strategy. We didn't know we were going to be in this position. We just sort of found it out. It get, kept, the revenue forecast kept getting worse during the course of the year. And, and so you had some situations where realtors were not real happy that we raised the real right. estate transfer tax by 33%. Um, fire companies, nonprofits were a little surprised to find that their, their money from the state's yeah, grant yeah. aid bill was going to be cut by 20%. Um, those are real figures for some, some real right, people. They are. And, and, and so this year we're trying to figure out with an 11 and percent surplus, how to not spend it all. Well, and just how do you go from a 10% deficit to an 11 and percent surplus when you're the state's largest employer and, and almost 15% of what's equivalent to the state economy flows through. Like it shouldn't be that, right. It shouldn't be that chaotic. It just shouldn't be that way. So yes. All right, I got to cut you off for just a little bit. Um, are you going to hang around till 10? I'm going to have breakfast. Okay, well, then I'm going to have you on two or three more times. Is that okay? Absolutely. All right, but I got to move on to some Many other thanks, things Jim. for a few minutes. Okay? And we'll talk about the specifics. Okay, thank you. All right, so everybody that's watching, I just wanted to, in a few minutes, yep, Katie will get everybody lined up, hopefully. But anyway, um, I think we're going to talk to Colin Walls, Walls Service Center, real quick. We got a busy morning here. So anyway, um, Colin, you're open. You're ready? What's yep. going on? We are open, and it is a busy morning here. So, and it's yes. I'm sure it's just as busy at Wall Service Center. So, uh, give us a call if you need to get in there today. Call us, and uh, you know, see if we have any openings. I'm not sure if we do or not, but call Tracy and see if there is anything that uh, that she can do to get you in there today. Right. Um, anyway, we're doing lots of air conditioning work. Other than that, we're doing lots of AC work. We're uh, getting real busy with it. So, if you've got a problem with your air condition, whether it's completely quit or it's just marginal you know if it's just cooling a little bit then we can still get you in at wall service center we can check it out figure out what the problem is and we can take care of it from start to finish we can see the entire job through right. we don't need to send it to somebody else to figure out what's wrong with it we can check it we can diagnose it and then we can do the actual repair on it and as a matter of fact we are a shop that uh, other shops send the big jobs to to get done uh, such as evaporator core if we need to pull a dash out or something like that. We can take care of it. Uh, give us a call, 422-8110, wallservicecenter.com on the web, and uh, you can always stop in. We're at 220 Northeast Front Street in downtown Milford. Stop there and drop your car off and take a walk around Milford. How many kayaks have you rented up there? None? Uh, me, none, but there's none. kayak rentals in Milford, yeah. right? There is kayak rental in Milford. You can bring your dog, bring your dog and your kayak, Jim. Go kayaking on the river. 
bring your dog to the dog, <laughs> the dog park. park. Yeah, yeah. And, and my go-to-go There's go three to kayak island. launches in downtown Melbourne. I know that. Isn't that nice? Yeah. And they're all right near your store. I'm waiting for the real, like, the launch where it... That shoot. launches you. Yeah, it launches you. Right. That and then you the land. Problem. Right. Maybe I could put one of those in. Um, yes, check with your insurance I'm agent about, first. I'm about 100 yards from the river. I think yeah. we can get just launch that far. Right. Only use it on high tide. 300-pound weight limit. Right, right. <laughs> Anything more than that, we might fall a little short. It would create a wake. <clears throat> yeah, right. In other words, there's no wakes in the uh, We're making a big splash. Right. Right. All right, All Wall right. Service Center, 422-8110, wallservicecenter.com. All right. Now, Katie, I believe, has got the mayor of Seaford lined up, and uh, Brian Richardson, we've got Ken Simpler, we got Kevin Short. So you're... We've only got like 20 minutes left, so you got them all lined up, no problem. All right, so anyway, I just want to let you know that we're inside Smith's Cafe. We are on My Cozy TV and my Facebook pages, so if you would, if you would, share it, okay? So share it. I think we're going to talk to Kevin Short next, and then we're going to talk to Senator Richardson. I think we're going to talk to the mayor of Seaford, and then with Ken Simpler again. But anyway, we just want to let you know that we're in the last half an hour of being on the radio and I don't even think we're on the radio right this minute. But anyway, we're going to be there in just a minute or two. So uh, right now we're just on My Cozy TV and on my Facebook page. So again, if you're watching on Facebook, if you would, please hit the share button and let people know what's going on. But I want to tell you that um, Weller Does Del Marva is celebrating its 250th show. And uh, the next half an hour is going to be fast, okay? So we've just got one after another. We've got 40 minutes worth of stuff to do in about 25 minutes. But I want to let you know that we're going to talk to Kevin Short. Then we're going to talk to Senator Brian Richardson. Then we're going to talk to the mayor of Seaford. Then we're going to talk to Ken Simpler. And I'm going to tell you about some of our other sponsors in the meantime. So um, that's kind of what we got going on. We're going to be with you till 10 o'clock right here on TV and on Facebook. But if you are... Got to get rolling. You can always watch the show at WellerDoesDelmarva.com, okay? WellerDoesDelmarva.com is where you can watch it. All the shows are listed, and um, we can take care of everything there. So I can't talk to you yet until we go back on the radio, okay? And I got to do two commercials, then you. And like I say, we have got a mad dash. We've got a lot going on, so I'm prepping you. I'm prepping you. No have your words and your thoughts ready. We do not have a second to spare. So anyway, Colin, are we on the radio yet? We are not on the radio yet. Is it Fran back there? Okay, so anyway, I can't say even say thanks to Fran. So, oh, okay, yep, I can talk to him right after you Kevin. Do it first? No, yeah, let's go ahead and do that first. We're back on the radio, everybody, could we? Yep, just get him right, just keep him moving. So anyway, we're on the radio. I just want to say that we are here in Smith's Cafe. We're in the last half an hour. I want to talk real quick about no-nonsense office machines. Rick Fowler, good guy, he's open now. I just dealt with him yesterday, had a laptop worked on. So if you need anything worked on, you want to buy anything in the way of office equipment or copiers or computers or tablets or whatever, he can help you out. It's No Nonsense Office Machines, 856-7381, 856-7381. And um, his nononsenseoffice.com on the web. Look him up on Facebook. He'll help you out there. No nonsense office machines, whether you need something, you need something fixed, you need advice, you need input, he's your guy. Want to talk real quick about Scott Sockwriter? He's uh, my power washing guy. Um, do we have a commercial? All right, we're going to play that real quick. So this is who does my power washing? Scott Sockwriter, professional power wash. Here we Hey everybody, Jim Weller here and I am live at Fine Day Farms, my house, this is where I live. My wife Denise told me it is time to get the green slime off the house. So what did I do? Picked up the phone. Who did I call? My good friend Scott Sockwriter. He owns a business. Look him up on Facebook, Power Washing Delaware. Like his page while you're at it. This dude's been doing power washing for over 14 years. Now take a look. He's got a couple different trucks here, but you can see Scott's right there and he's got his other man with him and they're just doing a good job. He's an honest man, been doing this for for over 14 years. He's licensed, he's insured, he's completely self-contained. His phone number is 302-858-9568. That's 858-9568. Power Washing Delaware on Facebook. Like his page there online. It's theprofessionalpowerwash.com. Good man, honest man, do you a good job? Give him a call. 302-858-9568. Scott Sockwriter, he'll clean whatever you need cleaned. See ya, bye. All right, there you go, everybody. If you need some power washing, Scott Sockwriter's a good guy, and he's on the Weller's discount card. Next, I've got the mayor of Seaford. Huge responsibility, okay? 
Seaford's a big town, got a lot going on. Um, good morning. Good morning, how are you? Good, and tell everybody your name and how long you've been mayor. David Genschel, mayor of Seaford, uh, a little over four years now. A little over four years. When yes, do you sir. run again? I just ran. Oh, so okay, so you're years. good for a while. I'm good for a while. All right, well, good. Can you verify or deny a rumor? Okay. All right. Is Chick-fil-A coming to Seaford? That is a very strong rumor, yes. Okay, so we'll yes. leave it as a rumor. Yes. All right, I'm so we like strong rumors. I'm probably the one spreading rumors. the rumor. Oh, really? <laughs> well, I've been spreading it pretty good. But, um, and Wawa is supposedly coming, too. That's another strong rumor, Okay, yes. so we got a lot of potentially strong rumors yes. going on in Seaford. There are some good things coming. And those, okay, uh, those what's are, coming for sure? Well, some of those things you mentioned are definitely <laughs> in the works and are coming through planning and zoning, but also other things. Well, you know, water and sewer is getting ready to run up north of 13 to oh, connect Bridgeville get some more and business. Greenwood. So Really? And, you know, you got to have those city services in order Absolutely. for businesses to come. So we're excited well, about that. Well, as soon that. as the... It gets there. I got some things I want to do, too. Awesome. I great. just need some city water and sewer to do it. That's right. That's wow. right. Oh, great. Okay. Well, so Seaford's moving. Lots Seaford, going on. Seaford is moving. We were just talking at the table over there. We've had a, in the past six months, we've had a complete restructure of leadership. We've had some people retire. So a new city manager, a new okay. police chief, a uh, new city solicitor. So that's allowed a, a culture shift and an opportunity to look at things differently. All right. uh, so it's been it's been a lot of fun, a lot of work, but well, uh, we're all focused on economic development, trying to push Seaford forward. Growth, growth, managed Absolutely. managed growth. Well, and we want jobs. I mean, right. we say growth, but we we want good paying jobs. Seaford is a town that once it had those great jobs, and want them and again. We want them again. We know the impact of those. So. Uh, we were talking at the table about our right to work bill, and uh, the state has come out against us. Uh, we're disappointed that they would do something like that, right. but uh, uh, we're still hopeful there might be a last hour pitch to try to keep Seaford right to work so we can uh, grow jobs. Keep going. Yes, sir. All right. Well, I'm going to let you go if that's okay. I appreciate you hanging around. I'd like to get you on another time where we could talk a little longer. If that's I would possible. love that, Jim. I okay? love it so much. All right. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Okay. Mayor of Seaford, everybody. Now we're talking to Kevin Short. But in the meantime, I'm going to talk about Wilson's auction real quick. They have a big auction today right there on Route 113 in Lincoln City. And I want to let you know that Wilson's Auction is a place if you want to sell something, you just take it and drop it off. You want to buy something, you just go there and hand your, hold your hands up like you're being robbed or something. No. But anyway, when you go to an auction, it's a lot of fun. So <laughs> today, starting at 10, going all day long and into the evening, there's a big auction at Wilson's Auction. Then on Tuesday nights, there's an auto auction. So if you got something you want to sell, take it and drop it off. I took a whole trailer load of stuff there on Wednesday. Or if you want to buy something, just go there and never put your hand down. All right. Now we're going to talk to wilsonsauction.com 422-3454 serving our area for over 40 years now we're going to talk to kevin short he needed a break he wanted to comb his hair now he's back okay good morning how are you i'm well i got to hang out with you last night and you watch did. you in action you did you look very busy i and gave you the uh nickel tour backstage yes it was so, cool yeah it was I, I was you know i was glad to see you don't you wish you were that spunky at 80 yeah, 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 he was. Uh, he was fantastic. You hear how high he could sing at eighty? Yes. Yeah. He yeah. Had a great voice. Yep. Yeah. Um, all of them. That yeah. whole it group was, a good was show. like very good. I got an idea that that version of Jefferson Starship was probably, is probably better than if they had all the original members together, right now that are still living. Man, they so. did good, and that girl, she, she could, could talk, she could oh, tell yeah. jokes. Yeah, she could sing. And she was really good. She was entertaining. Yeah. So what did you like the, the show? Oh, I really liked it. That's I, cool. I'm going to get out more often. I've took up walking. I, and <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was thinking that this morning. I was swimming, and I thought, well, now that Jim has taken up walking, <laughs> that, you know, he's, he's going to try to get out more. I heard you. More. I, I heard and you. And then I'm going to work on my social skills. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you're way too introverted. Yeah, 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 exactly. So what are you doing today? Today is crazy busy. Yesterday was busy. Yesterday we had Chris Jansen at the Freeman stage. We also had uh, Jefferson Jefferson Starship. Uh, today is um, oh yeah. another, there's, a, there's, a, there's two shows at the Freeman stage today. We've got this uh, Jurassic Dinosaur Kids show this morning, which is a big deal. I think they had like... I, the last I heard was 1,200 confirmed kids this morning. Is this a real dinosaur? Uh, well, the, yeah, I don't know. No, okay. I don't think so. I just was curious. Uh, but anyway, the, 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 um, there's 1,200 kids. They didn't kids. know how to answer that question. 1,200. <laughs> I'm Baptist. We don't believe in them. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's a struggle for me. You know? <laughs> that was another great answer. This guy's been to college. 
I, I, I saw, yes, this is the true story. I saw that our, our associate pastor, is a wife, is going to see the dinosaur show. And I thought, wow, what a stretch. <laughs> we grew up not believing in this stuff. Wow. Well, anyway, you got to so, see the show and anyway, see the kids. So, uh, uh, so two things at the Freeman stage. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a big deal. It's party rocks tonight. And uh, we've got the um, African American Cultural Festival in Dover on the green today. And okay. that's where I'm leaving as soon as I finish that Scrapple sandwich that's over there. Okay. Um, that's cooling off. Okay. I do this. So, Take your time. There's no rush. It, and then, uh, and then I understand I'm seeing you later today. Yeah, we're uh, back for the. Where is it? Can we mention the? Sure. The, yeah, the go bridge ahead. On the on yeah, the, on I the would. five nine. Okay. Well, sure. I guess I just did. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, <laughs> the, yes, eighty eight seven the bridge. Yeah, <laughs> is having an event today. You did it, not me. Yeah, I did it. All right. And 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 that's a trap on tonight. And okay. uh, it's so a concert. Gotta, yeah, it's a concert. And it's uh, a time of fellowship and food and fun. And, and it's going to be a, like a full production thing for them. They're bringing in food trucks. We're bringing in a stage. Uh, we're bringing in sound and lights. And uh, where's this at? At Trap Pond. Trap Pond. Right in front of the Nature Center. Okay. So, right where the um, reminders were. Yeah, we were on the. We I were lost on the, a pair um, of sunglasses. We, did you? <laughs> I might find them tonight. <laughs> we were on the patio, but because okay. this is, they're expecting a lot more people tonight, they're um, they're they're going to we're actually bringing in a stage and going to be really? kind of kind of to the west of the uh, Nature Center and. Uh, Aim towards the water, uh, so a little bit different, but in that general area. Okay. And they'll be, you know, they usually just have ice cream. They'll have food trucks and really all that. So, so I could come deal. hungry. You could come hungry. Okay. So you gonna be there? I will be there at one o'clock for the load in. You know, navigating a, a twenty by twenty four foot stage through those trees. Uh, with You'll a, have to get up a, a lot of speed with a pan. With a, <laughs> okay. With a, well, we did a walkthrough the other day, and we picked the perfect place. We walked it all off. We measured it. And everything was fine. We knew we could back in and make the turn. And then the park rangers showed up yesterday and said, "We really like to have it here." And this is 21 feet of space, so the 20 foot <laughs> stage should fit there. It's like, well, we've got to back it in with a dually, right? You know, and you got to be able to, you know, it's like that's parallel parking to like the nth degree. So, wow, we'll see. You know, okay. it's too heavy to move by hand. So, uh, so but, like if you had a dolly then, with a ball on it, it wouldn't. You uh uh-uh. uh. Okay. <laughs> no, it's a it's a fourteen thousand pound trailer. So it's light. Yeah. You need to order the next one in aluminum. Yeah. Aluminum. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there are comp, there are people in, in our in the, the competitors of ours that have aluminum trailers, and I could tell you why not to do that in the staging business, not okay. necessarily in what okay. you're doing, but in the staging business, having an aluminum trailer is useless. I have another question. I'm going to Washington next week. Okay. Okay. I'm staying at the Trump Plaza, and I. We're am go- we also going to-, to Washington today. We're doing the. We've got this. We're on the mall with the Smithsonian with the National Folk Festival. I forgot about that little event. So. You're in Washington today. Yeah. Well, they're they're leaving now. Yeah. I was okay. just on the phone. Yes. Are you in Washington again next week? Yes. Yeah. It's the National so, Folk Festival. It's a week and a half long. Really. Yeah. So Mid South Audio is bigger than just Sussex County. Uh, yeah, by a great stretch. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, what if somebody needed any of what you do? How do you describe your business? Well, we're in the concert production business. We do sound, stage, uh, lighting, video, uh, and then we also, you know, we started this with a recording studio and and installations. We also do sales. I mean, that's a whole separate uh, section of our business of you know, sales and installation. Um, uh, of, uh, any most people in this area would know Aldersgate United Methodist Church in Wilmington. It's a very big uh, Methodist church. We just okay. installed a sound system there, hung speakers forty. F- and the, the the peak of that church is forty two feet in the air. So really, that was quite so a job. So you got like one of them A frame aluminum ladders. We had a lot of scaffolding with a lot oh, of outriggers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Is, uh, How high kinda, will you climb? It's right. Uh, how high is this chair? <laughs> oh, I didn't know if you were a height if guy I had or no two, height. Or... I'm not afraid of heights. Okay. At all. Okay. I am scared to death of widths. What's that mean? So it doesn't make any difference how high I am. It depends on how wide what I'm standing on is. Okay, so like <laughs> so, a scissors lift. Are you uncomfortable in oh that? Oh, yeah, ter- terrified. But okay, so even though it's three foot wide. On top of the you... Empire State Building, I have no fear. Yeah. Really? So, you know, because that, okay. that, that is wide enough for me. Okay. So, you know, I'm, I'm afraid of widths. Wow. So... But you do all kinds of stuff. I we, mean, we right do. down to selling a guy a microphone for his band. Absolutely. Yep. You yep. know, wires, speakers, amps. Yep. And um, you rent the stuff, too. We rent it. We sell it. Yep. Do you rent drum sets? 
that set last night, you saw all that, all those instruments. I wondered were in. if they brought that with them. No, no, the, the band brought those three guitars and one spare was what the band showed up with last night. That all right, it. so that, that big it. keyboard with another keyboard up on top of it. Was it was all, all, okay. all, all rented, all, all rental. That, that's called backline gear, and that was they, they, they brought none of that. So really, yep. okay. All right, so basically, we're, who, who's your target audience? Somebody wants to put on a concert. Yeah. Somebody that has a facility that wants to do events from time to time, a church mm -hmm. or an organization, whether it just be graduation ceremonies or parties or concerts. Yep. And, and anybody that needs uh, to have a sound you know, or, or video or lighting installed. I mean, like I said, that's a separate division of the company, and that's, 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 that, that's got its own goals and its, it, its, its own objectives, and it runs... By itself, you know, wow. it's, it's its own So thing, somebody's so. building a building or doing a remodeling. I was at the Lewis Senior Center, and, you know, they're going to be doing a couple million dollar yep. addition. Or, we just did or, the Lewis Library. That did you really? Eight million dollar project. So yeah. what did you do in the Lewis Library? Speakers and things like Speakers, that? Speakers, all their digital signage, all the building is networked together. That building segregates itself so they can have separate meetings, so they can, they can take large rooms, turn them into small rooms, have four meetings at one time, or have one large meeting, and all the... All the video screens coordinate with that, depending on the weather, and it's all via, you know, controlled via a touch panel. Really? Uh, the Mac Center in Salisbury are getting ready to start a brand new installation there. Um, lots of stuff going on. The Renaissance Festival in Annapolis, the largest Renaissance Festival in the United States. Uh, we are complete. We are, they have. I'm going to have this wrong. They have 19 stages, and we're redoing 15 of them. Are you really? With all brand new stuff, sound and lights. All yeah. right. So, it's the largest infrastructure change I think they've made since they've you know, been in business. Yeah. Wow. And the Renaissance Festival in Annapolis actually brings in more people. In, they do it on weekends. They do it for six weeks. So it's Friday and Saturday. Thir Friday and Saturday for six weeks. And they, they bring in more people in those six weeks in the Delaware State Fair. So really? it's a big deal. Wow. All right. So lots of stuff going on. And I know you're busy today. I've never seen you this uptight. you got a lot of people coming I'm behind. I'm behind. I'm sorry. Well, I can give no, up. No, 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 no. I, I, I just, I've gotten behind. We well, can pretend happened. that I'm in Congress and I'll surrender my last minute to, uh, to my colleague. How about okay. that? Okay. How about if um, I yield my last well, minute? Well, I still need to give out your phone number because I want somebody to call you right now. 302-856-6993. And MidSouthAudio.com? MidSouthAudio.com. And Facebook. Facebook. Facebook and What about Tuesday Tech night's Talk show? Live. Yeah, I forgot about that. Tech Talk Tech Live. Tech Talk Live is this Tuesday night? That's right. And we are we're having a guest called RF Venue, which is a manufacturer that makes uh, antennas for wireless systems. They're going to be our special guest, and we're going to be giving away an antenna distribution uh, a paddle really? antenna for yeah, it's like this a, Tuesday a night five hundred dollar value. So if you're giving you it away a, free. If you own a wireless mic, it would be something you would be interested in. So okay, all right, all right, okay. Thanks cool. a lot. All, all right, right. I, I, 14, 13, I can see you. All right, <laughs> bye I'll bye. see you. Get out of here. All right, that was Mid South Audio. I want to talk real quick about Good as New Cleaning Crew, and uh, I got two more guests coming up. But if you need some uh, carpet cleaned or upholstery clean, these people can really help you out. It's Teresa and David Rowe. They've been actually in business 34 years. Very happy with them. I've dealt with them. They do a great job. Their phone number is 645-7800, 645-7800. You can look them up on Facebook. Good as new, cleaning crew, very good people to deal with. I'm very happy with them. If you need any upholstery clean or carpet cleaning, they have been around a long time. Good people. I wanted to also mention Jerry's Lawn Care, Jerry Santoro. Another good supporter of the show. If you need any grass cut, lawn care, irrigation system, pavers, if you need um, some trees trimmed, cut down, dug up, whatever, you need a basement dug, a foundation, Jerry Santoro, Jerry's Lawn Care, will do a great job for you. He's been in business over 10 years, good local guy. He also has mulch, only $15 a yard. You can pick it up at his place. Or for a small fee, he will deliver it to you. So it's jlc-llc.com. Jerry's Lawn Care. His phone number is 363-6025. 363-6025. Now, 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 we are in the last half an hour of the radio side of things. Ken Simpler is going to hang out with us till 10. But we want to tell you, at 9 o'clock, we go off the radio. So we need everybody to follow us, okay? So you could follow us simply by going to My Cozy TV or looking up Jim Weller's Facebook page, and it's J-I-M Weller, not G-Y-M Weller, okay? So anyway, now we're going to move right on. We're going to talk to Ken Simpler a little bit more. We're also going to talk to Senator 
Bryant Richardson. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay, Bryant, not Brian, right? Bryant. Bryant, okay. Get back, Jack. Jack's <laughs> over there messing with the knobs. All right, so anyway, we'll talk to the senator for just a minute. How you doing? I'm doing great, Jim. Good. I need you to talk right into that, if you would. I'm and, doing um, great. Thank you. And did you eat breakfast? Uh, I will. You will? Okay. Will. And you're hanging out with Jack Riddle? Uh, yeah. Is that yeah. difficult? Uh, no, he's a good no, guy. He's a good guy when he's sleeping, huh? <laughs> no, he's a good guy. So what's it like being a senator? How much fun has that been? Uh, it, it, it can be fun. It's it going to be a lot be more fun, fun when uh, we take the majority uh, this election cycle. I That's think. right. When do you run again? I run this year. Are you really? Yeah. Okay. You got a Facebook page? I do, and, right. and a website. Okay, so people can learn about you there. Yeah, richardsonsenate.com. Richardsonsenate.com, mm -hmm. all right. Any points you want to make or anything you want to say? or uh, About what? <laughs> anything. You can pick the topic. Okay. Um, well, one of, the, one of the biggest problems in Delaware right now is the drug ep epidemic. And I did get a, a resolution through the Senate, and it's in the House now, and it's to form a drug, um, Delaware Youth Drug Prevention uh, Task Force. Okay. And... Um, I've been trying to gather all the information myself on this, and there's a something called the Botvin Life Skills Training Program okay. curriculum, and um, this is um, a successful program. It's been in existence for 25 years. It's uh, a lot of the Northeast states are using it now. It has an 80% success rate. Wow! And it's, I'll take that. It's being it's being. Uh, Right now, it's required in Delaware schools, K through 12, okay. that we have some kind of drug prevention program. Right. But right. some of the programs, I looked at the list of the programs, some of the programs, I'm just, I really question their effectiveness. Right. Um, but Bodfins is proven. It's used in the Boys and Girls Clubs now okay. in Delaware. And uh, we are spending tens of millions of dollars, if not hundreds of millions of dollars, on drug treatment prisons and other things because of the drug epidemic. Right. We're going to spend the money either way. Well, We're either going to spend it proactively or reactively. For every dollar that you spend on this program, you save $50. That's a pretty um, good investment. That's a pretty good investment. Right. And right. it and think of the lives that are changed or are saved yeah. because of this. And the families that aren't yeah. disrupted Fam and the court uh, absolutely. time. Absolutely. So, are, are you able to hang around a little bit longer after, after 9? Sure. I got a lot more time coming up, okay. if, if you don't mind. <laughs> that's fine. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Thank you. Um, well, don't run off, but I've only got a, a, about five minutes left before I go off the radio. So mm -hmm. I do want to prep my radio audience to follow us. In other words, to come on over to My Cozy TV or Jim Weller's Facebook page. And if you can't do any of that, all this is recorded, and you can go to WellerDoesDelmarva.com, and all the shows are there, and you'll be able to see the show after the show if you want but i wanted to talk to ken for just a minute and then both of you if you could stay i got a lot more time between nine and ten that we can talk a little more in detail so just think of what you want to say in about two or three minutes if we could for just the last so part of the, last radio, part of the radio and so. i think bryant knows this as well but there is a bill that's not in his chamber yet uh in the senate but there's a bill in the house that has not yet received a vote and it's okay. called hb 460 and jim in the prior segment you and i talked about how do you run a an organization as large as the state of Delaware, not just year to year, but how do you run it for the long term where people know they're getting value, they're getting good decisions, whether it's around the opioid crisis or other things. They know every dollar is being applied well. They know we're going to be able to run this thing sustainably, and, and it's not going to be the year to year chaos. Right. HB 460, House Bill 460, is the first attempt we have made in 40 years. Oh 40 years goodness. to amend our budget framework. We have been running off the same rules that we put in place as a people in 1978 and 1980 when we had our last major fiscal crisis. Um, try to think about anything else you would be using in your life today that is a system that's 40 years old. Can you imagine your smartphone running on a 40-year-old operating system? Right. I don't think you can. Or I, your I know refrigerator there are some, or, or your lawnmower yeah, I mean, or anything. There might be some people out there driving a 78 Chevy, but not too many of them, right? Correct. I mean, you know, the, we have made improvements to everything else, but there is this preoccupation with the idea that the way we designed our budget system 40 years ago is going to meet all our needs today. It doesn't mean we have to tear down what's working for us, but we do need to build on it. We do need to take these once in a while as a people, large-scale, long-term stuff, and and take it seriously, not just try to go year to year. Um, and so this bill are a set of constitutional reforms.
that would give us a long-term trajectory that means if we spend at a certain rate that's equal to our economy and population inflation, it's going to meet our mean, that's going to meet our needs, and it's going to be within our means. That's one part of the constitutional reforms. The other part is what you and I talked about earlier. We don't have a simple savings account in the state of Delaware right. that says in good years we can save some and we can use it in bad years. We don't have that today, as, as, as crazy as that sounds. It's almost as if they plan for only having bad years. Well, I mean, it's like they didn't have any forward thinking that we might have a good year and we could save a little money. I don't. It, when you're in a bad place, you try to design a system around that experience, right? Right. So because those, you're reacting. Those reforms were epic in nature. They they moved us ahead of where we were significantly. But 40 years on, you know, that, and that gave us a generation of prosperity. You know, when you talked about early on, what did I do? I grew up in a restaurant business in Delaware. I don't think my parents have the success and the opportunity they have if the government doesn't get it right. Right. You know, and that, that was a seminal thing. And we had the same opportunity today for the next generation. Build something that's going to last another generation. Take on the big stuff. And this is this is a bill that's supported by me, a Republican state treasurer, a Democratic governor, the governor's secretary of finance, the governor's budget director, caucus in the Republican Senate, members of the Democratic Senate caucus, members of the Democratic House caucus, members of the Republican House caucus. Wow. But you know what? The bill is bottled up in the House caucus right now, and I don't even know if it's going to get a vote, but it is important the people of Delaware say, we just don't want to go along kicking the can. We really right. do want to fix the system. Because isn't the definition of insanity doing the same thing the same old way and expecting something different to happen? Well, you know, and Brian can speak to this maybe in, in a couple minutes that he has left, but if you've been in the Senate for a long time, you tend to forget the bad years like last year, like last year when you were tearing your hair out and running your garments over a 10 percent deficit. Right. It's amazing how quickly that institutional memory passes when you have a year like today when there's 11 and a half surplus and everyone can put an ornament on the Christmas tree. Right. Th that's, the, that's the problem. I'm in the last minute, I think, of the radio. So I do want to just say thank you to all my radio audience, everybody there. But you have an opportunity. We're going to talk about a lot of things here over the next few minutes, and we'd like you to follow us, okay? So if you would, just go to Jim Weller's Facebook page or My Cozy TV because we're going to keep right on trucking. All right? Now, we're trucking. We're still trucking. I got to do a – you guys can stay right here if you want. Um, I'm going to do a commercial with Colin Walls, Walls Service Center, and then we're going to keep right on talking. Is that okay? So, Walls Service Center is downtown Milford. Well, we've been in downtown Milford for 60 years. So my grandfather years. started the business. I'm third generation. My son Colin here is fourth generation that works there. So we've been around a long time. I bet you had to be fiscally responsible. Uh, yeah, you got to be prepared for the good times and the bad times. The good times yeah. hopefully prepare you for the bad times. Right, uh, so. as long as you recognize that. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, sometimes that's a tough part, recognizing what, what are the good times and the bad times. Uh, and you don't usually know until you're in the middle of it. Right. So anyway, Wall Service Center, we do all types of repairs. Everything from uh, simply changing a bulb on your car. You can stop in for that anytime you want. All the if way you get ready to go through inspection? Uh, yeah, well, that's a great time. It's just before you go through inspection, make a stop right by Wall Service Center. We'll come right out there. We'll check your bulbs. It's, Without an appointment. There's nothing worse than driving all the way to Motor Vehicle to find out your a $10 lights. bulb right. caused you to fail, and you got to go back and do it all over again. That's right. So just take that few minutes, stop by. We'll fix the bulb right there, or if everything's good to go, we're going to send you on your way. You're all good to go, and uh, and you can do that. But we do everything from something that simple on up to replacing an engine or a transmission. We did a transmission last week, and uh, uh, I think we've got another one here in the next week to do. And so we're keeping busy, keeping busy at Wall Service Center. Air conditioning work is big right now. Lots of people that their air conditioning didn't work last year, and they're discovering it still doesn't work. It didn't work. fix itself. It didn't fix itself over the winter time. Yeah, that, that's that doesn't usually happen so air conditioning whether it's just something simple or something major right. if they could just get the vehicle there you'll get it done it could be something as simple as a, a pressure switch you know maybe a, uh anywhere from a 50 to 100 dollar fix on up to you know it could be something major could be a compressor could be a, an evaporator core uh but what we're saying is we can do it from the small to the big right. we're not going to send you to another shop as a matter of fact other shops refer people to us when the jobs are too big, an evaporator core or something like that. Uh, some places only recharge it. If your air conditioning right. needs recharged, it means there's a leak somewhere. It's a closed right. system. The right, that's just a little band aid. It, right, I mean, it'll get you going, and uh, it might last a, a day or a week or a month, but eventually it's going to leak out again. Right, so, so it could be money wasted if you don't just find out where the leak is and fix it. Yeah, I mean, that's and what we do is sometimes the leak is so small, you can't detect it with a leak detector, so okay. it could die in the system. 
you use it, you know, it starts getting warm again, the and then we can find the dye. You know, we, we did a video of what the dye looks like. You yep. saw that this week and shine an ultraviolet light on it, and it, it turns bright. So, anyway, Wall Service Center, you can give us a call, 422-8110. We're open right now. We're open until noon today, so if you want an appointment for next week, Get in there and let's get that scheduled. You can always stop by. We're at 220 Northeast Front Street, downtown Milford. Check out the rest of downtown Milford while you're there. It's a great place. Lots of stuff going on. Lots of big things happening there. And wallservicecenter.com on the web anytime. Schedule an appointment right there. All right. Good local company. I've dealt with them for years. Honest, fair, friendly, trustworthy. And uh, they stand behind what they do. And they support many things in our community. Now, we're going to continue on. Um, sometime I want to get Jack Riddle on, maybe even his wife Susan. I'm not sure. We'll check on that in a little while. I think she's saying, I, I was hoping he was going to ask for me. But anyway, so let's continue on talking about the budget because, in other words, as a people, in other words, what should people do to, to try to get this voted on? Should they call their, their you know, legislatures and say, I want you guys to make sure you do vote on this, or do the people have no say? What could what could the average working person do that's watching or listening to see to it that this House bill happens this time around? Or do the public have no say? Public, uh, that's what all, I'm wondering. public always have a say, Jim, and it's okay. very important. It, 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 in, in, in fact, I think people don't realize just how much influence they do have with their local legislators. Uh, if, if there's one light bulb that's went off for me in state government, it's we're a really small state. And, okay. and, you, and we have 62 legislators, and every single one of them, I think, makes themselves incredibly available to the public. Yes. Oftentimes, we don't realize how much influence we can have. A simple email. And, and on, on the Treasurer's website at the state treasurer, at treasurer.delaware.gov, we've put a, a link for this HB 460. Okay. You can go there. It tries to explain in fairly straightforward terms what the bill's about, but it also does give you a link to the General Assembly's website. If you don't, some people don't even know who their local legislator right. is, right? And, and a simple email uh, or a phone call to the office where even if it's one of their aides that picks up saying, hey, I, I really hope that my senator or my state representative will vote and support HB 460 because I do want constitutional reforms of our budget system. I think we can do it better. That simple message, if that gets through, that does matter, absolutely. And I'll, okay. let, Brian, I'll let Brian speak to that as well. Because you're all for we, this, Brian. Uh, yes, I am. Is I think you're on. He's on? Live? Okay. It's okay. on. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm definitely for that. We, um, we do have a little bit extra money this year. And okay. one of the things that we were able to, uh, to do, which uh, I haven't seen in some time, is you know, we're allowed to spend up to 98% of anticipated revenues. This year, we decided to, we uh, made the decision to set aside an additional 1%, which is around 47, uh, 48 million dollars. Okay. So, and we have some unfunded liabilities going forward. So, you know, setting aside this amount of money is not that major of a thing, but it's something that should be done. So it's like a step in, in the right direction. It is uh, definitely a step in the right direction. Is this the direction. first time we've ever done this or just the first time in a while? Uh, first time that I, uh, yeah, first time that we probably have ever done this. Wow. You know? In a very long time. Yeah. Very long time. Yeah. So it's like, like, you know, we try to teach our kids to save money. Mm -hmm. So this is something new. In other words, this is, we're going to start teaching our government that, at least our local government, to start pondering what we would teach our kids to save for a rainy day. And if you think about it, Jim, you know, we don't just always assume that the kids are going to make the right decision every time. That's right. right. We, so we try to, you know, when so we talk a, about putting a framework in place, you know, there's 62 legislators. We're going to have right. some significant turnover in the legislature this year. There's a number of That's retired right. legislators. So if you're coming into the legislature as, as someone from any, whatever background, you know, what's his self-governance, right? So, right. you know, you might come from a real estate agency. You might come from publishing a newspaper. You might come from being a school teacher. Finance is complicated. That's so the idea that we put a framework in place that the General Assembly can can think about the multitude of decisions that are in front of them. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this legislature, I mean, I don't know how many requests Brian gets, but everybody has a priority in the General Assembly, right? Yeah, Everyone because has a... Oh, we all have needs. And because they have, have is it called constituents that, that, are, that are knocking on the door saying, I've got something I'm passionate about yeah. that so, I want... I want you to make happen. So if you get 100 or 200 or all these requests about some good program, and it's always a good program right. or a good project or a good deed that somebody wants done, and oftentimes it has a price tag, 
How do you think about that? If you yeah. think about them all in isolation, that's overwhelming. But so we do need to give legislators and ourselves as a people a way to think about our finances. That is, how do we do it that's sustainable? How do we do it in a way that meets our means? It's within our means and meets our needs. And how do we do it in a way that just doesn't have us careening around up 10, down 10 every year? Right. That's an important set of rules and constructs that if you're in this massive organization, help you make better decisions. Yes. And it appears that you're more unified if you're making progress like that. Well, I mean, I tend to believe that part of our divisiveness, part of the reason that we can't come together on some things is is is, is around finances, right? If you, you know, let's face it, marriages can break up over finances. You know, countries can go to war over finances. Right. Um, you know, if but if you have a shared, at least a framework. If you if you have a shared framework for how you do finance. And then you got policy choices inside that framework. I think it actually tamps down the political discord. There's a lot of conservatives, and I think Brian's one of them, that you know, if there is something that is genuinely working and it's helping people and we're getting a good value from it, I think that it's not as if conservatives don't want good government. Right? Right. Conservatives want a government that works just the same way progressives want a government that works. They might disagree about the scale of it, but the reality is none of us want a government. That, I don't want small, ineffective government. Progressives don't want large, incompetent government. Mm-hmm. But how do we prove up and how do we build the systems that ensures that the Delawareans get the best amount of return, value, for every dollar we put in? Right. Best bang for the buck. Best bang for the buck. Wow. All right. Well, what else do you gentlemen want to talk about? we got time now. Well, I, I, one of the things that... I, I've noticed is uh, we, 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 do, we have a lot of annual reports. I'm on the Joint Finance Committee. Okay. And uh, I've only been on there. This is my first year on there. But uh, we have a lot of uh, re- annual reports that uh, are uh, sent to us. Okay. Um, I think the one thing that I think we really need to do is prioritize those reports because, I mean, there's a lot for the 12-member committee to, to look absorb. at, to absorb. And, you know, in my first year on there, um, I, I just say that uh, if we would prioritize and see where we're spending the most money and make sure that the taxpayers are getting the best deal for that money, I think mm-hmm. that, that is uh, something that we really need to pursue. Another thing is, too, that, you know, when there is a shortfall, you know, the default mechanism is to raise taxes. And, you know, I've, I've opposed every tax uh, increase plan that's come uh, in front of the in front of the legislature, but you know, if you if you just don't want the the taxes to increase, then you have to look at the other side of the uh, right. uh, of the ledger, and you have to say, okay, well, how can we save some money? Mm-hmm. And you know, the d- drug enforcement is, a, is an example. You know, it's not going to change overnight, but if we start investing now in our youth, eventually, we're not going to have to build m- many prisons. We're going to be able to spend that money. We're not going to have to spend as much money on, on drug treatment programs, right. uh, rescue programs for people who are... The court are, system. You know, the court system and, and the whole work. So we've got to start somewhere. You know, it's the same way with our education system. You know, our education, you know, uh, we have some schools that are doing a great job. We have some schools that maybe n- need some work. Um, let's, let's look at one other area. Let's look at Wilmington and look at the crime rate, the murder rate in Wilmington. You know, the way to <clears throat> re- <clears throat> restore that <clears throat> community is <clears throat> first thing you, you need uh, to have safe streets. Mm-hmm. You know, if you have safe streets, businesses are going to come back in. They're going to provide jobs. But if businesses located there now are afraid that they're going to be uh, become a victim right. of a crime, they're not going to move in, into the city. So if we can fix that part of it, get the streets stri- the streets safe in Wilmington, get the businesses back in there, we'll provide the jobs. But then we have to also concentrate very much on the education system too, to make sure that the kids are prepared when they get out of school yes. for uh, gainful employment and ability to make decisions. A- ab- absolutely. And that's what the, the you know, Botvin Life Skills Training Program would do. It's, it's a proven thing. And uh, I'm really hoping that uh, this, you know, it had the, uh, the resolution's in the House now, and it has to pass through the House. But if we can get that task force running this, this, uh, this summer, through the summer, then we can have a program and a plan that can really save a lot of lives and save a lot of dollars in the future By next for Delaware's. 
I'm hoping that. Well, yeah. not maybe by, not maybe not by this school year. But I'd love to see one. it in this school year. Yeah. You know, because it, you know, you you, you think about it. It's a proven record. Uh, prove, has a proven track record. And uh, why not go ahead and invest those dollars now when you know you're going to get a return on investment of 50-fold? Oh, that sounds like a very good, a good program. I'm kind of excited to see how that works. Well, I heard about it during the JFC uh, hearings in uh, February. Okay. And it was just kind of in passing, but it caught my attention. And I thought, well, you know, so I started looking into it. The more I looked into it, the more excited I got about the potential for this program. And then I talked to uh, Tony Windsor at the uh, Boys and Girls Club. Mm -hmm. He's a, a strong advocate for this and some others in the Boys and Girls Club. So this is a program that, um, you know, let's, let's invest some money now. Right. Let, let's right. get this thing rolling and save some lives and save some money for the future taxpayers of, mm -hmm. of Delaware. And uh, hopefully, you know, help these kids to go a different direction. Oh, that would be, that, that's words, the ultimate goal. Right. That, yeah, that is that's the ultimate, the ultimate goal. goal. All right, so you're a newspaper man? Yes, sir. And um, how's that going? It's, it's good, good. How long have you been in the newspaper business? Um, since the 70s. Really? Yeah. I started as a reporter. do you write or do you just uh, well, right uh, now, manage uh, it? Well, right now, after I was elected, I okay. took my hands off the operation. Okay. I appointed uh, someone that was, had been working for the organization for a while, made him publisher. Okay. I took my hands off. He put How his hands on. How hard was on. that? not difficult at all was it difficult because okay. i you know being in the newspaper business you you kind of absorb what's going on from the sidelines okay okay now now i'm in the game now i'm making i'm, I'm voting on issues i'm mm -hmm. i'm recommended some changes and so forth uh so it's it's not a it's it's a lot different from just observing to to participating but uh it's something i have a passion for because I don't want to see, I see so many problems in Delaware, the drug, drug ep mm -hmm. epidemic, kids are leaving, or graduate from school without uh, an opportunity for employment, even though there's many jobs right. in the state of Delaware right now. I think uh, there's probably more jobs than there are people unemployed in the state of Delaware right now, but they do not have the skills to, to fill those positions. Mm -hmm. So if we can make sure that there, there are some programs in the schools now, one's called a Pathways Program. And I think this is, a, you know, this is another effort that I think is really going to play some big dividends in the future. It's going to take some time. We can't right. fix the problems overnight. They didn't occur overnight. But we really need to work hard to make sure we make the changes now that are going to have an impact in the future. Wow. And as a legislator, you work all year round, but you've got a lot to do this week. Well, this is, uh, we have four more days. Four more days. Four more days, and then tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, but Monday, I meet with, with the OMB to okay. go over the grant need. So okay. hoping that the grant need uh, reduction that was made last year can be restored. Okay. And uh, we're going over that, we're going over, there's, I think it's 450 different entities that depend on the wow. state of Delaware for a little bit of funding, anywhere from a little bit of funding to some major funding. To keep it's operating. interesting to see. I, I'd like to encourage people that are watching or listening that have never been to mm -hmm. watch the Senate vote on things. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting, it's, in other it, words. Yeah, it is and anybody yeah. can go, yeah. in other words, that's not wanted or carrying a gun or anything like that, yeah. in other words. But anybody yeah. that can, you know, go to the building. But we live in Lower Delaware. We can go to Dover and actually see how this rolls out, how it really... Colin and I went up and ran around for a day or two and did all kinds of interviews and everything else. And uh, it was a, an eye-opener. All my life, I had never been there. And I'm like, wow, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is how it really, really happens, you know. And you get to talk to people and see how it works, the lobbying out in the hallway and the arm wrestling and everything else that goes on. I so. mean, Brian mentioned one. I think he serves on one of the most important committees we have in state government. He mentioned the Joint Finance Committee. Um, it's 12 members. So you got 62 members in the General Assembly, but 12 members actually are the ones who ultimately propose the budget that every other legislator votes on. 
The Joint Finance Committee is 12 members of the legislature, uh, members from each caucus. Um, wow. And that body, the reason I think it's interesting is because Brian gave you a little perspective on the legislative side about, you know, policy ideas and things that he's learned about and things he would like to see implemented. But everyone can remember how their government works, right, as they go back to the, sort of their government 101 or social studies. Is right. You got the legislature that has the power of the purse, so they get to determine what our, what, what our resources are and where do we apply them. The power they, of the purse. But then I they like hand that. it off to the, the executive branch. The executive branch is the body that's supposed to then go out and execute, to actually mm -hmm. make do the it work. happen. So um, I sit on the executive branch side, right? I'm an independent elected executive. So is the so is you know the insurance commissioner, the state auditor, the attorney general. The governor obviously runs most of the executive branch. So when we think about the executive, we tend to think about the governor. But in Delaware, we have several other statewide elected executives. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I get the mandates from the legislature. So, you know, when, when they say what their priorities are around my budget, for instance, you know, then it's my job to go out and execute, to do the best job that I can with the resources I've been given by the General right. Assembly. But I think it would shock some Delawareans if you sent them up to Dover, Jim, like you suggest they go, and they sat in the Joint Finance Committee. And this goes back to one of my prior points about how do we actually get better. The Joint Finance Committee hears from me once a year as a head of an agency in state government, just like every other cabinet secretary runs an agency in state government, DELDOT, DENREC, Department of Education. Every year we go before the Joint Finance Committee to have our budget request. We get to fashion a budget request, they get to reshape it, and we make our budget request. And if you think about in a business or wherever else you would be, you would, if you're gonna make that budget request, you would think that you would have 12 members that would wanna know, well, what'd you do with the money we gave you last year? Mm -hmm. How, if, if, if Brian gets one of his important programs through, you would think the agency would come back and sort of give some metrics around how right. did we perform? How did it work? How did it work? What, what did we invest? What did we achieve? Did we meet expectations, exceed expectations? Um, and you would also think that there'd be some defense of the, of the, the monies you're asking for for the next year. What are you going to do with it? What, mm -hmm. what, what, what are your goals? What are you trying to achieve with that request? Um, I run a state agency that does everything from manage our $2 billion cash portfolio of the money we have on hand, Okay. to I uh, manage the state's checking account and savings book, make sure we balance every year with the banks. I arrange all the banking services for the state of Delaware. I manage the state employees defined contribution plan, their, the equivalent of their 401k plan, the college savings plan, plan for people with disabilities. Um, I sit on 12 different committees and task forces and councils. Take a guess at how much time I get before the Joint Finance Committee once a year for us to talk about the job I'm doing as an agency head in state government and, and my request for the next year and what I hope to accomplish. Guess how much time I get before that body? Well, first of all, only once a year doesn't sound like much it to me. Much. In other words, if you're managing the largest business in the state of Delaware. I'm not single-handedly. My agency is but, broad in scope, but it's, it's a state agency, yes. Right. But in other words, and you're meeting once a year, I'm going to guess two or three hours? I get about 28 minutes. Really? And that so, would be very hard to make is all the educated decisions you'd want to make or gather as much information as you need. And moreover, the information that those legislators are supplied in advance of that meeting that you would think maybe, well, maybe the system is where they do a bunch of review in advance and then, then in the actual meeting we just discuss the things that are most important to them. But yeah, one, 28 minutes is, um, is seriously, uh, it, it's, it's almost farcical. That, that right. they would have I mean, it takes real, longer than that to get a car loan. Uh, they would, they, that, that they have any real idea of the job I'm doing. And I mean, not just me, but any agency head. That they can really, in 28 minutes, process the job of the state treasurer. Or in two or three hours, process the job of the secretary of, uh, you know, uh, education. Um, they might even spend a day with the secretary of education. But the Department of Health and Social Services is 4,000 people with, I think, 13 divisions. Um, wow. The whole system that I think is a consensus issue about just getting better, achieving results with the resources we have. It's got to start with a more thoughtful process around how we give these important policymakers better information. And, and what can they realistically process, mm -hmm. you know, across an organization this vast. In a time frame. In a time frame that's reasonable. I mean, that needs some fundamental rethinking, you know. I it, would yeah, agree. Investment. Has the government just grown um, and we just haven't took the time to sit down and say, gee, as a business person, you couldn't run a business this way. You know, we need to regroup instead of, I feel like all of our, all of our elected officials and so on are just trying to, to, to tread water and, and, and run as hard as they can without sinking, but at the same time, it's almost impossible, the task that's in, in front of them. I'll give my one-minute answer, and I'll let Brian speak to the same question, but that's exactly what I see. What I see is 
I see a lot of well-meaning people. Yes. I see a lot of people that want to hard. Want to do good. I see a lot of people that don't, though, however, question whether the systems we're in are meeting the needs of us as a people. Because, as I said to you before, that budget framework is 40 years old. 40 years old. And, and is it really enabling us to succeed as a people or not? How do we measure that? Right? And I'll let Brian answer this question, but the one thing I think that does frustrate me about our state government is there seems to be a point of whether it's a little bit of Delaware pride or whether it's just that we, 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 we don't come to the job every day saying, how do we get better? We say we're doing a good job. And, and if we were doing a good job 40 years ago, we're doing the same good job, but the world's moved on. And, and the idea that, 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 you know, I get some pushback because they think I'm a, I mean, I'm a 51 year old man, but they think I'm a whippersnapper because I've only been in Delaware <laughs> for three and a half years. But you have to push the organization to consider the basic premises on how it operates, or you're just not going to get better. And, and there's resistance to that. And, and the state of Delaware is constantly competing against other states. You know, we want big corporations to move here. We want to look like we know how to run our business. In other words, you know, and I mean, the things you're saying to me are like almost how could somebody not see this? How, how could this be, you know, like there isn't anything that, that we have that we would keep even our bodies 40 years later change. In other words, so there's not much of anything we would have for 40 years that, that wouldn't change. And it sounds like also I bet you Delaware has grown in 40 years the numbers and the amount of things we're trying to accomplish. So I like, I like this thinking. I just don't know how you, how you get everybody to sew into it and, and, and say, you know, because everybody wants change. They just don't want to be any part of it. They don't want to have to do anything, I guess is what I'm saying. Nobody wants to do the, the heavy lifting. Everybody wants change. They just don't want to do anything. You know, it's like you go first, in other words, or, or, or something like that. So well, how are you seeing things? Well, w right now in Delaware, we have a one one party rule. We have a Democrat governor and a majority in the House and the Senate. There is some across the aisle dialogue now that uh, when I was elected, we broke up the supermajority. When Anthony Del Cola was elected, we our numbers came to, rose to ten. Okay. Uh, several years ago, we only had five Republicans. So you couldn't even have a conversation in in the Senate. Well, we could have a like a little tea or something like that. Right. Uh, uh, but what our ideas didn't affect change. Okay. Our ideas are starting to affect change now because they need our votes on certain issues. The bond bill can't pass uh, without uh, Republican votes. Okay. So if we don't like what's in the bond bill. Uh, as a caucus, if we stick together, we can stop that until we see the changes in that bond bill that we want to see. So there is some across the uh, dialogue, and I think it's improving the way that the state of Delaware operates. You know, the $47 million that's being set aside this year, I think, is a result of the fact that uh, the Republicans are starting to have an influence on the way that uh, the uh, government is, is operating. When's the last time they had $40 million to set aside? Or did, when? Well, you should always set aside something, something for future needs. Like I say, we have unfunded liabilities uh, in the billions of dollars. I, I think, like last year, they didn't set anything aside. Well, I think the minimum that, uh, that they've set aside is like $15 million. Okay. Uh, sometimes, it, sometimes it's more. But if you have unfunded liabilities going forward, you need, you need you know to really you need to take that into consideration because it's going to eat into your operating budget in the future if you don't. So you know you have to, you will be forced to cut back on programs or raise taxes again, and we pay probably a hundred uh, different taxes and fees now in the state of Delaware. So why do we need to add something else? You know, mm -hmm. I just I just feel that you know a four point three billion dollars plus we get a, a lot of money comes back across the Potomac River and into Delaware from the federal government which is a bone of contention with me because you know Delaware in I think it was um, 1916 became the the final state to pass a resolution that they they could have a federal income tax so we have a really? federal income tax now that started, and the way it was sold to the, the American people and to the states was it would be 1%. 1%. I mean, you know, it's just chump change, you know. Send it across uh, into Washington, D.C. They'll take care of national defense and, and a few other things, highways and, uh, and a few other things. But now, 
we're, we're spending a, sending a lot more money to Washington, D.C. They're sending it back to the states with mandates. Right. So they are controlling the states when the states should have more autonomy in mm. these decisions. If, I would love to see us cut back on the money going into D.C. and keep more of the money here so that we can make decisions without those mandates. I agree with that. All right. Well, um, I don't know what else to ask you or say. I mean, um, I'm going to take a break here for a few minutes. If you, if I, I, I know Ken's staying. I mean, if you want to stay, we could have some more talk here in a little bit if you feel like it, in other words. So, um, all right. Um, I'm going to switch gears. Is that okay? Absolutely. All right. As I listen to you both, I'm like, it sounds like we have some ideas. It sounds like we have some direction. We need to become more unified all the time. And we really do need to run this government like a business because you cannot, just because there's checks in the checkbook, you can't write them out if the, if the money's not there to write them just because they're there. There are certainly business principles you can bring to bear, Jim. But yes. here's, here's, here's the challenge, I think, and sometimes people say this to me all the time because they're like, Ken, you spent a lifetime in business. You're in state government. We're happy you're there as state treasurer. Um, why can't we run government like a business? Or why don't you just run government like a business? And I say, well... Let me start with the fact that in every business I've been in, I've always had customers. Right. You know, customers who make decisions. Do they like my product or do they not like my product? Good point. We don't have that. I ha we, in all, every business I've ever been in, we actually have prices. So you know, those customers help me determine what is a fair mm -hmm. rate of return and what is a fair price to charge for my goods and services. If you think about it, we don't get that kind of feedback. We don't know how much security, Jim, do we really want as a people? Do we want to have zero crime? Do we want to have one crime per thousand citizens per annum you know we don't have we don't, it's not as if when i'm in the hotel business in rehoboth and someone comes into the hotel and they have a bad experience uh <laughs> these days they go home and they write a really nasty review on TripAdvisor. Right. And, and you do something and we do something correct um, and moreover if they come into the hotel and we're charging you know 169 dollars for a room and someone down the street's charging 149 and they don't think that the $20 extra is worth it, they're going to go down the street, and, and we're going to have to think about our price structure. And you will feel the effect of and that. And we'll feel the effect of it. You know, in I just had a gentleman retire from running the banking services for the state of Delaware, which arranges everything we do, from the, the, the machine you swipe when you walk into the DMV to the largest banks that collect funds for all state agencies. 26 years, the number of times that a citizen had picked up the phone and said, I'm just not sure I like the banking services in Delaware. Do you know how many phone calls that gentleman got in over a quarter of a century? Few thousand? Zero. Zero. He's arranging banking services as a central service for the state of Delaware. The people of Delaware have no idea that someone is out there thinking about how they pay for that fishing license or how they get their, you know, registration then, paid for at the DMV. So we run a lot of businesses that don't actually face the customer. We don't, you know, so we as are an organization. Are people allowed to comment? Of course they are. They could always write the state treasurer's office and say, hey, I'm just not sure that the way you've designed the state savings plan for state employees and the way you staff that is allowing state employees to save enough where maybe they wouldn't need as large a defined benefit plan. Those kinds of questions, the average citizen, just, you know, think about that. Like, would it ever occur to you to, to make a phone call about that? Well, it's going to now. I never thought. <laughs> Here's what I thought. I thought there would be no way I could communicate that to anybody that would open their mind to think about it. So that, that's an because impediment, too. That, that is an impediment, too. That we're Not, not that my legislators wouldn't think, but the person that I would actually go to about it, in other words. Because a lot of times my perception is, you know, it's just kind of how they do it. They've been doing it that way, and nobody's in the mood to change it. And, and, and that, that is my perception of government. And, and honestly, you know, that has a vicious feedback effect because if that's the attitude of the average citizen, that reinforces in the mindset of our state employees that that's the level of expectation that's out there, right? Um, and so, and, and, and uh, people sometimes want to beat up on state employees a little bit, um, but I don't think that's entirely fair because every organization I've ever been a part of, you know, Everybody responds to incentives. Everyone, I think, wants to feel they're adding. Right. They're coming to their job and they're doing something valuable. You know, our staff, I use the hotel as an example, they get immediate feedback to know whether guests are having a good experience or not. Mm -hmm. We don't always get that sort of feedback loop in government. So it makes it really important for us as managers, and I, I look at one of my most important jobs, is how do I create 
an organization where we have to supply ourselves with a feedback loop. Mm -hmm. How do we know whether we're getting better every day? How, and, and it requires us to actually then say, okay, well, what's a measurement of success? How many state employees do we want to have a savings plan? Right. 100%? What level of savings are we going to try to encourage them to get to? We've got to have a goal. So in government, because we don't necessarily have prices and customers, it's that much more challenging as a manager to figure out how do we define success. But if we could do that across the organization, if we could adopt that mentality that we need to become more performance driven, how do we define it? How do we align employees' personal goals with the goals of the organization? It's not the free market, right? And that's why it's challenging when people say, just run it like a business. Well, businesses, we're, we're insulated from competition, right? The right. Maryland State Treasurer is not coming over here saying, Delawareans, I can run your treasury better than the State Treasurer right. of Delaware. So, you know, it, yeah, I know that sounds like an excuse maybe to some people, but it, it's, it's not, it is a reality of how we have to build a better system right. You don't have a backboard to bounce this off of. You don't really know, you know the numbers, but you really don't know how well it's being received. So one, I as a manager have to do that, but then ultimately I gotta be able to supply that to this right. JFC committee in a way that's digestible so they can say, hey, is Simpler the best treasure in the country or is he the worst? Or is he just mediocre? What is he doing for us and what is he achieving? And all that feeds back up to that top level where you get to your resource. You know, you get the people who allocate your resources. I would um, love to think I get, if yeah. I do a great job, I get rewarded for it. Right. Uh, you're, you're the best. <laughs> you're the best. <laughs> no, quite. Uh, I want to tell you something, the difference between, and I'm probably going to have to get out here in a little, okay. while, in a little while and let Jack or somebody else come up, but uh, the difference between free enterprise and the, uh, the government is, uh, in free enterprise, if you have a good idea, it's successful. If you have a bad idea, like your business, right. you know, it succeeds. It's been succeeding for a number of decades now. A, a bad idea, a bad business idea, falls mm -hmm. and goes away. But in government, bad government programs get subsidized. Right. More money gets thrown at them because, oh, they, what they say is uh, we don't have enough money. You know, we could do a better job. We just had, uh, you know, right. some, some more money. Give us a few more million dollars. We'll get better results when we need to really measure those results mm -hmm. to make sure. You know, I think it was Reagan that says the uh, th closest thing to immortality is a government program. So. Yeah. Uh, wow. With that, I think I probably need to get out here. And All right. Well, thanks else. a lot. I'd like to have you on again sometime. All right. So. Thank you. I'd love All to right. do it. All right. Thanks. Well, Ken, I'm going to switch gears for a yep. few minutes, and then maybe I'll let you sit up here with Jack and chit-chat a little bit. Is uh, that okay? I'll always chit-chat with Jack is great. Okay. And um, I guess somebody can find out, are we going to do Dean's Delicious Dishes? I don't know if we are or aren't. But, Colin, why don't we go ahead and do your Walls Service Center, if that's okay? That's and okay. talk I'm about go. what's going on there. And can you find out if we're doing Dean's Delicious Dishes? We are. Oh, okay, we good. Are. No. Oh, she's, she's checking. Right okay. Now. Right. Right. All right. Do Katie's what? Delicious Dishes, maybe. Katie's Delicious Dishes. <laughs> All right. Wait and see, right? Right. All right. Wall Service Center is open today, and we are taking appointments for sure. I don't know if we're taking appointments for today, but definitely for next week, Monday, Tuesday. Uh, so give us a call if you want to get in there. Right there, phone number's right there on the screen if you want to give us a call. See that right there, Jim, that phone number on the screen? Over right. there? Exactly. 422-8110. <laughs> That's it. Yep, wallservicecenter.com. It says wallservice.com on there, but no. you can get there either way. We've got both no of those. So Both things will work. Both wall service or, or wall they can just come in and talk. Yeah, that, we like people to stop by. I mean, that's, that's and pretty say good. hello and watch the show. You know what we get a lot of? We get What's a lot that? of people that stop in and just say, can you just come out and listen to this? <laughs> and it, Like a song on the radio, but you're talking <laughs> right. about a tick or a knock or a thump or a bump. Yeah, yeah, something like that. And uh, I usually like to try to get them to describe the noise first. Right. Well, let me hear what kind of Draw noise Draw me a it's picture making. of what the noise sounds like. Right. But anyway, yes, we will go out and listen to your car. Sometimes we're pretty busy. You know, maybe all the techs are tied up or I'm tied up. Um, but you might have to wait a minute or two. But we can come out there and we can listen to that noise for you. And I've experienced it. I've had you come out there and say, I think this is maybe what it is. Right. And I was like, that dude's a lucky guesser. Right. Because it was that. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, the, I remember that on, the, on Denise's, Denise's car. car. yeah. Yeah, yep. He said, I forgot what it was. It, it was Something. a blend door actuator. The blend door actuator. Right, we on talked a, about it earlier. 2009, 2009 it in It was Ballot. thumping, wasn't it? It was thumping and bumping. Yep. Um, actually, it, it was making an odd noise. It worried her. She pulled over. She thought something was really yep. wrong. Yeah, but and yep. it really was nothing major, um, But and we got it taken care of pretty quick yep. and easy. 
quick and easy problem. So anyway, at Wall Service Center, we can check it out. We can take care of it. We can fix it. Air conditioning work. We can do it. We can do the job from start to finish. We're not going to send you somewhere else. We're not going to say, well, we'll put some uh, refrigerant in it, and then if that doesn't fix it, well, then you can go over to right. wherever. No, right. we can put the refrigerant in it. We can check A it for to leaks. Z. We can actually diagnose it and repair the problem, no matter what it is on the air conditioning system, whether it's uh, something simple, you know, a, a bad pressure switch or a bad relay, all the way up to the compressor or the evaporator core or the condenser. You know what the condenser is, right, Jim? Oh, That's absolutely. Your yeah. That's the thing that condenses everything so it'll fit under the dash. Actually, no, no. It, <laughs> it makes it smaller the refrigerant. so it'll fit. It, it actually cools the refrigerant. It's what sits at the front of your uh, uh, car, right in front of your radiator, and it cools the refrigerant back down. So anyway, Wall Service Center, give us a call, 422-8110, wallservicecenter.com on the web. And then you can stop in to 220 Northeast Front Street, downtown Milford. We've been in that location for 40 years, and we were in another location for 20 years before that. Wow. We've been there 50 years and 10 years. That's what it was. I thought so. Yeah, location we're at now. Because right, the building 50. looks a little older than 40 years. Yeah, it looks like 10 as years, I look at the bricks and stuff, older, it right? looks like they're maybe 47, 48 yeah. years old. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 50. Katie, I want to talk to Jack and whoever he wants to bring, Ken and so on. Kevin left. Mm. Who's left, Colin? Who's left? Jack Riddle's here. Jack Riddle's here. Yeah. No Dean's talk. Delicious Dishes, and I got hungry. Really? A little bit, yeah. Wow. All right, so do you know if they're busy there at Walls? Have you talked to anybody? Uh, they are busy, yeah. I've gotten okay. the word that they're busy, and they're getting stuff done this morning. And, okay. Uh, they're taking appointments for next week. All right. Did you need Jack? an appointment? Schedule one now? You know, I actually do need an oil change in my pickup. I don't know when we get it there. I didn't know if you wanted to bring anybody with you. How about uh, Susan? Susan? Susan Riddle? Susan Riddle wouldn't come up here if... Is you she paid saying, her double what you're paying me. She's like, no, I'm, I'm, um, I'm good. All right. Been a lot of happening this morning. What's? Uh, yeah, it has well, been. Well, you've, you've been, you've been, you've been educated. I get paid by the word though, so you've I'm good. You've been educated this morning on all the. Well, I want to tell you something. As I listen to him, a lot of it, it's more obvious than you think. Like how we run the government and how some of these things have been around so long, and we haven't changed anything. And, and some of it is way more obvious and simplistic. Well, I, I hope what he's been working on gets to, to get voted through because, I mean, I mean, he does. I mean, if you ever looked at his resume, um, I mean, he should be state treasurer. I mean, this, this guy has been around. He's run companies. His family's in business. How long have you he known gets him? 20 some years. Have you really? Mm -hmm. Him and his, his father. From, I, I know his father a little bit better than him, but okay. we met probably seven, eight years ago when he first huh. started thinking about this. And it's a big, I mean, he's he's got a, he's got a job being, right. uh, being involved in the hotel business as the guys are in. So it's a good thing. So, wow. So how's your world going? It's Where's going the Ram baby? Um, she's on her way from Pittsburgh. Okay. And then we're going out to we're going out to the ballpark here in Seaford. There's a big softball tournament going on over really? at, uh, in Seaford. So okay. i got to go over and make sure Charlie and Amy don't get themselves in trouble. So we're going over oh, there. Oh, Charlie's today. playing? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep, so we're going over there. You know, they're getting to go on vacation. They always, they're on vacation permanently. I Pretty mean, much. Ever, ever since Jamie went to work for Dryzen. Bill at Dryzen, no. she seems like she's on vacation all the time. I mean, It seems I mean, like it's, it. It's, you know, it's got to be a better job than even working for Wellers. I Maybe. Mean, is there anything better than working for Wellers? Not that I know of. I mean, so. But we have yeah. a lot of fun there. Not, lots been going on here this morning. A lot of people. Have you ever toured the White House? We, I, I got to go to the White House um, about a year ago. With, okay. With uh, we got a hundred of us got invited to go see President Trump and meet with him and Pence about oh, okay. some of the banking stuff. So you got to sit right now. So we got to take your well, shoes I wouldn't off go, and relax. Wouldn't go that far. Oh, okay. Um, but I was in the same room. How about, okay. How about if, okay. How about if we leave? So it's not like a hundred of you just sat said, down and he came up to me and he put his arm on my shoulder and he said, "How's Jim Weller doing?" Right. I've got a did, picture did you, of him. Did you know that? I didn't know that, no, but I I've got a, a picture where he wrote Jim Weller's pictures are the greatest or something like that. Did so. you? Uh, who did that for you? Stacy probably figured out a way to do that. No, he sent it to us. Did he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I was over there at the inauguration, I was the only guy that kept getting in trouble for taking pictures where I shouldn't. That doesn't surprise me. In, in <laughs> well, the there wasn't enough signs. Uh, yeah, I'm sure there wasn't. So, I'm sure there wasn't. But I'm going to the White House, and I just didn't know you're if you going, had any tips. You're going again? Uh, Thursday. Really? To the White House, taking a tour. 
You are? Yeah. And you got through the clearance? Um, as far as Goodness I know. Gracious. Yeah, we're staying at the Trump Plaza. Hey, I'm still I'm still not dealing with this Jefferson Starship thing too. Oh much. yeah. I'm still I'm still oh, yeah. just uh, still trying to process, I gotta learn how to get to up and dance like everybody was doing and all that. I mean in other words, well, well, Kevin and I are working on a group of, of uh, we're working on a group, of, of a group, a list of groups that Jim Weller would should like. go see. Okay. So, but uh, we didn't come up with Jefferson. That wasn't one of the ones on our list. <laughs> it was spur of the so, and, and Denise really enjoyed it. This is going to be. I a got a Milky Way bar and a bottle of water. I was happy for fourteen dollars. I don't know how much it was, <laughs> but um, I was. I've never even been to Dover Downs. I was like this. I, I, you know, well, I it was is so there. far away and it Colin, is so small. There was a room I recognized. The oh, room you've been to Dover Downs, before. right? You went I was, there to the, to the, one of the conventions, or right, something. Because the room we were in was that same room that we went when, um, yeah, right. Not the night of Trump winning. Not that night. No, it was. It but was uh, down 2012, the I think. Right. So yeah. I have been there twice. Yeah. Then they let you back there. in. And they let me back in. What was really cool, though, I had to go around the back of the building to get the tickets. I got them out the back door. Yeah. Which was idea. actually the front road of the racetrack. It was a great spot. So I went all the way around back of the building, and there's we're gonna, the... We're going to see Jim out on the... Uh, on the payment scalping ticket. This is going to be right. a new thing. Don't get involved in that, Jim. No, I'm not. No, when, I when just... You, but when you say to people, you go out the back of the building to get your tickets. That's well, it's because the band gave me the tickets. Oh. Well, because you're a groupie. I guess. So in other words... Did you buy their because, music on the way home? Oh, I bought their T-shirt. I should have wore it today. It was one size fits all, I'm they said. I'm surprised you didn't invite them to come down <laughs> and be on the show this morning. I, I they could have played. <laughs> they could have played. So wow! You've, you've never have you ever been to Freeman State? No, I've not been there. And you, I'm going this year. And you and you ever been to Hudson Fields? Never been to Hudson Fields. In, in where else? In, I've never in, been to I, Bones or whatever it's called. You've never been anything. to Bottle and Cork. Never been to Bottle and Cork. Been to the, well, you've been to the Rudder. I've you, been to the Rudder. The buffet thing. That right. They, they don't do it anymore. Oh, oh they don't do they it. Don't, they don't wow. do the buffet. I'm but I'll miss tell you, that. we were there for lunch. Uh, we did this color run, Rotary. We raised right. money for Rotary uh, with uh, with the help of the folks at Alex at Highway One and. Uh, we had lunch there, and mm -hmm. let me tell you what, Pete McMahon, who's the executive mm -hmm. chef there, he has cranked it up. I'm telling you, the food really? was unbelievable. At the Rusty Rudder. At the Rusty Rudder. It was really, really good. You know where and else I'm, I've never been to a concert or any? Is the Ocean City Convention Center. I never knew it had a place you could Denise, have Denise, I'm starting to feel real sorry for you because I have a feeling that Mr. Jim Weller, music man, is going to be... Um, do you want to be in a band? Kevin could probably get you in, a, in one of his bands. I might just start my own band. By I golly. would recommend band that, of bandits. I, I would recommend that you maybe hang out with him because he is a talented musician. Okay, that's another thing. You need to get your reminders back on there. That was really good. You, that you, was. You yes. had them on here a few yes. times. So. Yeah, I need to get Yeah, that. I have a feeling that you're gonna. You found a new passion. Mm -hmm. I've you, actually because you are just a halfway guy. I mean, you you know you don't you know. <laughs> You're either all in or all out. All you're, in or all out, right? So, so, so now you're going to be, be following. Groupie. What you're was the name be... of that group? Starship something. What was it? Jefferson Starship. Don't 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 eat. right. Don't don't don't. I didn't have him. my T-shirt on. Don't help him. Don't Jefferson help him. Starship. Well. All right. We are going to go to Bones though. Yes, we're going to go to Bones, and I still Bones. would like to go to Ruth Chris again. Yeah, we. I have a gift card again, another one. Jeez, I'll tell you that I need to use. I hope them things don't ever expire. How small that kitchen is. And the upstairs of the um, area for the golf course. Yeah, it's pretty nice. The locker room. It's pretty nice. And hey, my breakfast is here, young man. Is it really? It is. Okay. I'm going to go eat breakfast if that's All okay right. with you. Well, if either one of them want to talk again, would you send them back? I will. We're I ready. Will. We're in the last. And by, and by it's the way, hard to believe this show I, is almost over. I, I do want to thank you. you you've, uh, as you know, I'm involved in, and Katie and I are both involved in Rotary. Yes. And we got a lot of stuff going on, and you're always very, very kind to give us well, air Well, do you time. know today they're selling barbecue chicken? I know that. They are selling barbecue chicken. I'm glad you reminded me of that. You're absolutely right. The yes, and we want them Rotary. to sell out. What time would you like them to be done today? They'd probably like to be done at about 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. But okay. they are. Absolutely. Thank you very much for reminding me that they... Right. So the, it's over the canal bridge in Lewis. On the left-hand side. On the left-hand side. Pavilion. You can, is there any picnic tables? Can There's you eat there? picnic tables Or there. you can get it to go. Or you can get it to go. But like if a business said, I'm just going to go ahead and buy five or ten up and take them back to all my that, people. And that happens. That happens. And, and we always cook more than we sell, and then we donate it to uh, uh, one of the, you know, one of the shelters and one of the homes okay. that needs so... 
you know, if so you, that's if today. You, that's that, a today that, only that offer. Today. That's right. They start selling at 10, and uh, they're down there right now. But uh, Cooking the chicken. I, I got to come here instead of cooking chicken. Oh. So, that, so I want to well, thank you. Not, thank Katie's you for that. Katie's going there. <laughs> yeah, Katie's Katie, going there. Katie told me she's going down to cook some chicken. So, But I got grandkids coming in, so we're going to stay over here. But uh, you've always been very generous. You and Colin both have given well, the rotary airtime. And we raise a lot of money and, and do a lot of great things, and, and it's 100% going right back into the community. So thank you for all the... And you may not know this about this show, and it appears we work very hard, but it is a lot of fun. Oh, well, yeah, but, so. and, I mean, really, it, it, it would be interesting for folks to just to come out and see, because everything we're seeing now, you are you don't see what's what's in front of us. Right. And there's a lot of magic happening in yep, front of there us. there is. And, and the fact that you deliver it here... Um, and pull it off every week. I mean, it'd be easier to sit in the studio somewhere and do mm -hmm. it. You just show up and turn the mics on. This is a real production. Yeah. And, I, and I tell you, anybody who's interested, I would invite them to come out and just look at what happens here. If you're ever interested in anything with AV or anything with video or anything with TV mm -hmm. or media, I mean, you, you're you're pretty educated on it. Colin's pretty educated. Colin's and Kevin Short, educated. who is Mr. Media, he's the very very educated. Is always here. And uh, if you're interested in that for your business or your your career church or, or your anything. career, um, I'd invite people to come out and just look and see how you guys pull this off every week. It'd be mm -hmm. a real education for people who are just looking at the TV screen right now and not being able to see what's behind the magic. Because right. there is a lot happening. Do you remember when all this started? I remember back at Jimmy's Grill because it was all Catch you can eat all you can eat spaghetti on night. Tuesday nights. Yeah, used to have all you can eat spaghetti for six ninety five. Yeah, and, I remember uh, that. Back on and that's where that's where I remember one of the first guests we had on that show was Rob Arlett. That's right. Rob Arlett was one of the very before few. Before Rob Arlett was Rob Arlett. Rob Arlett before he was in council. council. Rob came out and, you know, of course, I mean, I've heard you say it many times, you launched his political career. Absolutely. Or maybe I said that. <laughs> maybe you uh, said Maybe it. I said that. I don't know. But uh, it is kind of, it is kind of, it's kind of amazing. Mm -hmm. So. Well, we have fun. Yep. Couldn't do it without Colin and Colin. Well, Colin's the brains of the outfit. Um, electricity plays a role and internet and bandwidth play a huge you role. Learned a lesson on that, did you? Oh, Yeah. Yeah, so. bandwidth goes away in a bank. We learned that. We, we learned, learned that the hard way, didn't it we? It all worked until <laughs> until it we turned working. it on, right? right. All so, right, thank you. All Jim. right, if you want anybody else to send them over, we're in down the countdown time. Cheaper's not better. We found out too, right? On What's that? Cheaper's on the internet, yeah, cheaper internet. Yeah, cheaper internet, right? And dirty internet, <laughs> yeah, right. right? Keep your wires clean. So anyway, it's been very busy here this morning. Weller's Utility Trailers is open. I want to make sure I tell you that and. Um, I want to thank everybody that watches. I get comments and people let me know and people say, man, I watch your show every week. I want to thank the people that do watch the show. I want to thank everybody at My Cozy TV and WRDE and Bob Backman and everybody um, for that. Um, I have Katie, who always works behind the scenes. Thank you. Colin, Colin. Today we also have Stacy. So it's been a very busy morning, a lot of things going on. And uh, the restaurant has had people coming and going and so on. So I want to talk about Smith's for just a minute. If you've never been here, it's Smith's Cafe. And um, you want to see if Ken wants to talk anymore or not. It's up to him. Okay. All right. That's fine. Okay. All right. So anyway, um, we're at Smith's Cafe. And they're open seven days a week. So if you want lunch, you want breakfast, you want dinner, you want seafood, you want crab cakes, you want a hamburger, you want a wrap, you want to get a cake or a pie to go or a piece of cake or pie to go or the frozen farmer ice cream, whatever you may need, Smith's Cafe is the place. It is a nice family environment, very nice booths, tables, everything's clean, made from scratch. The Smith family's been in business now 30-some, maybe 40 years cooking food. So, good local family with many long-term tried-and-true recipes. All right. Did I miss anything? Is there anything else? Anybody? Stacy, you got anything else you want to say? Okay. She looked nervous, like, holy mackerel, do I have to talk twice? That was almost the look on her face. Sure. If you want, Katie's going to talk. Katie is going to talk. Katie's usually very quiet, struggles to render an opinion, but is always wise when she speaks. I don't think anybody's ever said that. Right what do you think about this morning? It's pretty exciting. It was I busier could, than I thought it was I going could to be. Listen to treasures, you know, simpler, simpler talk yeah. all day long. Very smart. <laughs> Very That's what smart. What he gets for hanging around me and Jack. I tell you. Wow. But when you think of our government and you think of the budget and you think of the amount of money, 
it really, to me, needs to be run a little bit like a business. In other words, you know, it really does. But he was talking about how you don't get feedback. That is important. You know, when you have a business, you got customers. You hear from your customers. But when you're talking about the state and government like that, you don't you, you don't know how it's working and stuff like that. So, you know, there's all these programs and different things and stuff like that, you know. Mm-hmm. So, but what's going on in your world? Well, I think it's kind of funny that I talked to you yesterday evening. Okay. And you mentioned that you're such a party animal. You, like, no, never no, no, mentioned I, anything about going to this show. Here's how the show came about. Because I talked to you before I went home. I go home and I said something to Denise about Kevin Short's somewhere and it was what's the name of the group jefferson starship and denise is like i might want to go to that or i might have said do you want to go and i said all right well i don't even know what time it is so i text kevin and said what time does it start Mm -hmm. and he said nine o'clock and um then i had already looked online and realized it was sold out but then there was just this way to figure out how to get a couple tickets so um we ended up going. So we went up there. We met outside the building to get my tickets. Then we had to go around the building and get in the, mm-hmm. and to go in. So it was it was it was something. You know, they've been playing. I don't like music. to plan too far ahead. <laughs> I see that. Except for the show and everything else <laughs> in my life. But they've been playing together since the sixties. But the lady didn't look uh, too old. The gentleman was mm-hmm. getting ready to celebrate. Well, I think they've had different person. people come in and out of the band for okay. several years. But man, but they could really hit them high mm-hmm. notes. There was you know. a woman named Grace Slick who used to sing for them. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then it was also called a couple different names, right? Yes. yes. Jefferson Airplane, Jefferson Starship, yeah. Starship. Yep. Yes. Yep. So, but the drummer was good. And, and I got to see what Mid-South Audio does. It's cool. Because like the drum set and the keyboard, I, I realized, you know, when Kevin was on the show, they didn't bring that with them. No. They rent that. And that's part of what Mid-South Audio does. So, you know, they were doing the lighting and the... The speakers and the amps and the, and then the big speakers hanging from the ceiling, all the lighting. They put it's all amazing. that up yesterday, mm-hmm. and then they took it all there. They stay till they're done mm-hmm. taking it all down. Yeah, you know. And um, so Mid South Audio does a lot, and that was just one of two or three things that were going mm-hmm. on last night. And I heard so. him talk a little bit about the Renaissance Festival in Annapolis. Right. Have you ever been? No. You need to go. Is that where people dress up and they run horses facing uh, and they have the big stick? Well, first of all, there's so much at the Maryland Renaissance Festival. It will blow your mind. Okay. It's so much to do, so much to look at. It's like a you can make a day out of it. Really? Um, the food is great. Um, you see some really cool things. And, and it's kind of like, I remember when I was a kid when we would go, the costumes were really just like medieval type stuff. Okay. Now they'll have okay. people who like... There'll be people be people dressed as pirates and all kinds of stuff. Really? Oh yeah. What did you dress as? Uh, nothing. I just like to go and observe. I am really? not dressing up. New. Okay. <laughs> not happening. You won't believe I did sell them something. Oh, I think electronic you told me that. signs. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, you need to go. Okay. It is a blast. about when is it? It runs from the end of August through October. Okay, end of August through October. So I, think I got maybe the last week in August. Okay. But I um. The closer it gets to, like, Halloween, I think it gets a little bit busier. Okay. So, we, I think last year we went, like, in the, maybe last week of September, first week of October, oh, we had a ball. Okay. And it's all about who you go with, too. Okay. You got to make sure you can go with people who can kind of take a joke. Okay. It okay. makes a difference. <laughs> okay, okay. You can't be real... Um, Staunch. Uh, no, not at all. Because you're going to okay. see things. I had to like give Violet a little preparation before we went. Like, you listen, you're going to see some things today. <laughs> okay. So it's a, uh, it's fun. It's really a cool show. She liked it. Mm-hmm. Oh okay. yeah, absolutely. Now you're going to sell chicken today. I am. So if anybody wants to meet Katie, she'll be at the barbecue chicken booth in Lewis. Yes, it's Is that um, right? down near. It's on Savannah Road. Over the, the bridge, right? Yep. At the almost at the very end by the Dairy Queen, it'll okay. be, it's right along that strip. Okay, there. So on the I, left, going down. So I know the weather's not so great, but come by and have some chicken. I wonder what it is like out there. Yeah, I think they're preparing for a storm. Or Are I've they heard really? some. Okay, you know, all right. There, apparently, this is a sign that you're getting older because um, all I can think about now is weather and traffic. That's all my the only two <laughs> things I think about. <laughs> Soon it's going to be braces in college. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm already okay. doing the braces thing. All right. But it's funny. I keep track. We've had a lot of accidents right outside of my office. Office, oh. So I keep track of them now on a calendar, and then that's it's. You're trying to develop your own statistics. Well, I'm t- because I'm like I know that the road is a problem, right. and I'm seeing so much of it. I'm like I'm just going to start.
they're keeping track of that. And wow. Keith Dot wants to speak to me directly right. and right. want my opinion on things, right. you know. Or your, or your um, analytics. Yes, absolutely. Wow. <laughs> this weekend was down. This week was up. Right. But know. the temperature. Yes. You, you got to keep track of the temperature, too. Yes, absolutely. Too. Hotter yeah. days, there's more accidents. All right. What else you got for me? Nothing. I mean, what else do you have going on today? Um, today, I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm going to get done here. I am a little hungry, to be honest with you. Um, but when I get done here, I'm probably going to stop by Bridgeville, and then I don't know what I'm doing. You don't want to come okay. have chicken in Lewis? Not really. <laughs> if I got that close to that chicken, I could end up at Gilligan's. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To be you honest like with Gilligan's you, take, I'll take the chicken home, mm -hmm. in other words. But I do like Gilligan's a lot. So, um, But Weller's is open. I want to make sure we have a busy day. We really need another salesperson, bad, in other words. So we're looking for somebody to help us sell and you know sell sheds and carports and things like that. And I actually have got a hankering now to run for politics again. Well, of yep, course. For it's county in council. I really, in the past few days, got this real strong hankering to maybe run for county council, which has caused me to think about hiring somebody to help me run everything I have going on. I don't know what that word would be, but somebody to learn everything. Manager? No, not that. <laughs> not that. I, I, and it's all happened because I have somebody who really wants to be my campaign oh, manager. Oh, oh. Bad. And he wanted me to yeah. run for something other than Is county council. Is this person council. male or female? Male. Do I know this person? No. We advertise for him a lot on this show. But um, okay. no. But anyway, um, he just really feels it's something I should do. And so I've rethought more just county council. More just county council. That's a so, cool but, position. You know, we'll see. But anyway, um, but I'm also just thinking I might need somebody to help me not run just one business, run everything I have going on, in other words. So. That's a job. Are we about out of time? I can't believe this show is over. What did he just point to? Oh, okay. I thought he pointed over there. I was like, am I missing something? So anyway, I want to say thanks to everybody. Katie, thanks for all your help. Oh. Now, you're not here next week. No, I'll be on vacation. Okay, and that's it. That's the last one for the year. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm trying. Actually, I I Look, was. She's got another one. She's going to tell me about. I was booking a trip uh, in late September, and I made sure that we would go after the show. Thank you. No problem. You do get out of here quicker now. Yes. Oh gosh, yes. I'm Colin is like a wizard. A wizard. Mm. He really is. Okay, we we'll have to get him a wizard. And fool around. Right. Yeah, that would be great. That'd I think you great. should incorporate that. All right, so anyway, thank you, everybody, for watching our show. We have a good time doing it. It's Weller Does Delmarva. This is show number 250. We're going to plan a big party for show number 300. Free breakfast for everybody. So, and gift cards and iPads and all kinds of things. So, we just have to think it through and figure out how we're going to do this. <laughs> Get her face. She's like, what are these talking about? All right, everybody, have a good weekend. Well, I got her attention, yes, didn't I? Did. All right. So anyway, we're going to leave you. All right. So thanks for everybody that's been on. Thanks for everybody that helped behind the scenes. Thanks, Bob Backman. Thanks for um, all of the electric companies to keep the electric on the entire time the show was on. And also thanks to all the Comcast um, people who made sure our Comcast worked flawlessly today. So anyway, God bless you all. Have a good day, a good weekend, and I'll see you when I see you. And other than that, we're out of here. Goodbye, everybody.